Da, da, theme song, theme song. Da, da, da. <laughs> I'm Tanya. I'm Nikki. Let's do this. <laughs> this is the A Thousand Eyes in One podcast where we discuss Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire. Although lately it's really just mostly been Game of Thrones with the book stuff thrown in. Um, today we're talking about Season 7, Episode 2, Stormborn. Riding through town like a stone cold killer And I don't know the meaning of surrender You'll never take me alive You'll never take me alive Yes. <laughs> what an intense episode. Oh man. There's just so, so much. It felt like it was longer than an hour. It I did. kept looking at the clock and I was like... <gasps> Oh my God! There's still 30 minutes. I'd get so excited. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> it was just it was so much, and just like last time, I mean, they're not they're not fucking around. Like they're really, uh, it's like all the timelines have converged, and like everything is happening in real time now. That's what and, it feels. And like. I love that it's all moving so much faster. Oh my God! It only took six years. <laughs> <laughs> six I know, years of world building left. and like character building, and just it's like holy. Oh my God! Oh, don't depress me. Oh, <laughs> it's just—I mean—it's a lot, you know. It's a lot to fit in. Yeah, man. It, that's and but they're—they're they're doing such a good job. Like everything, I—I I, you know what? I'm—I'm I'm just gonna put this out there. People, I've been trying not to read these things, but people have been hating on the last couple of episodes, and I'm just like, are you not entertained? <laughs> What's wrong with you? What I've don't got, they like, like? I just like all kinds. Of, well, like people don't like. I guess Daenerys and the way that she's being. I've, I've seen a lot of Daenerys hate, which I was actually kind of surprised. I'm like, come on, she's finally in Westeros. Like, right, I think that what we is, wanted? Is that what we wanted to see? Like, isn't this what you guys have been waiting for? Um, and uh, there have been lots of spoiler things that I guess we could talk about. One of them I saw that was kind of interesting, and I've watched a couple of times for this one thing that they're talking about um, in the intro. Have you talked, have you seen what people say about the intro? Oh yeah. About the, about the, uh, the, the shivering the being, being swollen, uh, swollen, frozen. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like do that. have some thoughts on that, um, yeah. that we can get into later if you want. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should. I think it's worth talking about. Okay. So you want to start with Danny at Dragonstone? Yep. So, my first okay, so my thought I the thought I had before the episode was um Danny's plan of attack. I was wondering if it would follow John Connington John Connington's plan from the books. Uh-huh. Remember he didn't want to attack King's Landing directly either. That's he right. He wanted to go to the Stormlands and where else? I don't remember he's where else. He's basically coming he, up from the south and then going to basically yeah. gain allies. And then he went and got his own castle back. Uh-huh. So I kinda of wondered if that was um where they were going to go with it. And I guess they kind of did. But before going to her plan, I liked that she wasn't here for the flattery. Yeah. She called uh, Varys out super quickly. Yeah. And, um, and I, you know, like I wanted to be upset about it, but I couldn't because she's, I mean, she has no reason to, to trust his loyalty. She has no reason, you know, to, I mean, it's the first time that, that I think that we've ever seen Varys actually, like, maybe on screen express what his motivations are. Like, in the books, you kind of get that. But on, on the show, I don't think that I've ever really seen, or, or maybe I have, I don't remember, Varys saying, hey, I'm here for the people. I don't care who who's in charge. You know, I do care who's in charge. But if, bottom line, I want to make sure the people are taken care of. And uh, I think he handled it really well. Yeah. As only he could. I mean... When she mentioned uh, how Viserys fell for people saying that people were so, you know, so mm-hmm. many, uh, Targaryen banners and drinking toast in his name secretly. Yeah. She's past that shit. And I'm glad that, you know, I mean, I didn't expect her to really fall for that kind of stuff now. She's been through a lot. And she's, she's been a lot. through a lot. And she saw how, how those kind of thoughts like made her brother a weak person, you know? Mm-hmm. He was he was relying he he was relying on a fantasy and she but she's been through enough to see that that couldn't possibly be true. Yeah. I mean, just be realistic. Your family's been gone from the realm for since you know since you were born for like twenty Nobody's years. Checking. Nobody's checking for you. <laughs> Most people don't even know she's alive. Exactly. If they thought you were to come back, the one they'd expect your brother, which you know, uh, which is obvious. And two, like it's been so long. 
they're not like they've been through too many wars to even like even hope for a Targaryen to come back and save them. And who said that things were so great under a Targaryen rule anyway? Right. That was something Olena mentioned later in the episode. You know that things weren't that great. I mean, the Targaryens did not have a perfect rule. No. So there's no reason for the common folk to really care who's ruling. Exactly. Because, you know, it, no one's really for them. No, I mean, if you go back, even if you go back to the history of the Targaryen, like Targaryen rules, uh, there have only been like maybe three to five really good kings or queens. That the people, <laughs> you know, like out of that entire, their, their entire time that they spent ruling for, for however many hundreds of years it was, like, there were only a couple good ones, so no. <laughs> and even and even under um, Aegon the Unlikely, even under his rule, where he was peaceful, he was a man of the people. You know, he spent Aegon the Unlikely is Aemon Targaryen, aka Maester Aemon's older brother. Um, I mean, younger brother. I'm sorry. Yeah. And Aemon hey. decided not to take the throne and let his younger brother, who's the fourth son of a fourth son, become king instead of him. Mm-hmm. Which he is why he's black. called. Right, he took the black, and that's why he's called Egg and the Unlikely. He is the egg from the Dunk and Egg series. Yep. So he spent all this time living among the small folk. Exactly. And he cared a lot about them, and he did a lot for them. And his rule still wasn't totally peaceful because the lords didn't like it. Yeah. So even when you know you do have a Targaryen a- who is a good ruler and is you know a good leader. And has to support the small people, the small folk. It doesn't matter that the lords, the nobles will still rise against you. Right. So you're too because you're too common. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're too basic. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Anyway, Daenerys right now, I feel like is very reminiscent of Aegon the Conqueror, mm-hmm. showing up in Westeros and leaving from Dragonstone with three dragons. Although, yeah. um. You know, she doesn't have three dragon, two other riders. Yeah. But the idea of, you know, this being Aegon the Conqueror all over again, do you think we're going to see another field of fire where, you know, it's dragons just burning everyone up in a battle? Uh, I would like to because I think it'd be fun to see. I don't know that, I don't know that they will, after, well, I mean, I don't know that it would be smart to have all three dragons in the same place at the I same time. I don't either. Time. I really don't. Um, what I did enjoy about this episode is the ref- the constant references to um, Aegon and, and the original conquering of Westeros because it was like, oh, finally, we can actually talk about this. You know, like we can go into detail because this is this is the point in history that no matter who you are in Westeros, everybody knows about Aegon and his three dragons everybody yes. knows the story so like it's scary it's like it should scare people a little bit you know like one's a lot nobody's ever come with three dragons to conquer and here comes this princess from out of the fuck of nowhere uh, and she's got three dragons like not only is she like a targaryen and she's a princess but this is this woman's got three dragons and she's come to westeros like everybody should be shaking in their boots <laughs> And like you know, gasping into their cups, and they should be afraid. But I like, I like, I, I like it because it's a, uh, you know, it's it's nice to be able to get into like book history on the show and to kind of take see everybody's perspectives on what happened and how it's going to affect them. Egon's conquest is actually like my favorite um, story about the Targaryens. Yeah, um, we talked about it in our first episode. Uh, we'll do that over someday if you'd like to hazard a listen go for it (laughs) we'll we'll probably we'll probably do a redo of Aegon's conquest another time um complete with maps and shit oh yeah (laughs) but uh, Aegon's conquest is definitely one of my favorite pieces of Westerosi history Mm -hmm. there's just so many pieces and I think it's I think what it's just like, you know, his sisters are involved and you get a little bit of their relationships and um, you get to see just kind of like what Westeros was like before and what happened after. And um, there's just so many, there's so many epic battles and epic fails. And yeah. <laughs> it's, it's and, amazing. And you learn so much about the major houses plus the old mm-hmm. houses that no longer exist. Exactly. Um, so if you're, if you're ever looking for a read, check out the world of ice and fire you can read all about Aegon's conquest in there i find it really interesting mm. um can Varys be trusted i th- i think that Varys. um i believe him when he says he serves the realm mm-hmm. I, I do too 
I believe that he, I don't believe that he's in this to like turn against Daenerys. Um, I don't think he's unless, like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, unless she's, you know, turns unless out to be she a goes bad. Queen. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that he's not blindly loyal. You know, they need someone who isn't. Yeah, he's right. He's like, what did he say? He's like, I'm not going to support incompetence. Um, and for through blind loyalty or something like that, and he's he's absolutely right. It's I mean, oh god, and it's true. It's it's the politics. people, it's the people, the small folk and the common people who suffer. Exactly, they do. Everybody, when and you know, when people go to war, it's the small folk who starve. It's the them who they get sent off. They you know, like their families are being destroyed, their houses are being raided, their families are being raped and burned and pillaged. You know, like all mm-hmm. like the nobles don't have to suffer through that behind their castle walls. Um, the small folks are essentially at the first line of, you know, um, expendable defense <laughs> and they always suffer first. It brings to mind the broken man speech from A Feast for Crows. Mm. Is it in Maribald? Yeah. When he, he discusses these broken men, you know, these wars happen, people go off and fight for a lord they've never met, who they'll never see. Yeah. They give their lives and the ones who don't give their lives are broken in the process. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what Varys is talking about I actually wish they had done the Broken Man speech last season with uh, the Septon that was with um, with the, with, uh, with the uh, Sandor yeah, yeah they yeah, should yeah. Uh, that would have been the perfect opportunity um, but who knows maybe we'll see that speech come out of somebody else's mouth because they've been put in other people's words <laughs> in other yeah. people's mouths and uh, that really that was we'll talk about that in a second but that was really exciting Varys and Littlefinger, you know, in the beginning we saw them as these two schemers, and I don't think we really saw a whole lot of difference between them, but as the seasons have gone on, we're yeah. realizing so much more that Peter Baelish is out for himself, mm-hmm. and Varys really does care about the realm. Yep. Yeah. Let's, I mean, when you say that, you kind of get to, it kind of... Um, I mean, that's really the two sides, the, the two sides of the coin, the people who are out for themselves and the people who are out for the realm. Like you could put John Stark or John Snow, let's be John Snow mm-hmm. out for people who are there for the realm. You know what I mean? Davos mm-hmm. is there for the realm because he's of the small folk too. And then you've got people like, uh, Littlefinger who's out for himself, Joffrey, who was out for himself, um, King Robert even, who was out for himself, um, and I think you could put Rob Stark in out for himself, too, actually, because look at everything he did, <laughs> all the ways that he fucked up. Uh, same thing with Catelyn Stark, same thing with Cersei. Uh, and so I think that's actually what it's shaping up to be people who are for the people and people who are for themselves. And, I mean, it doesn't mean it, it being for the people doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a pass and make it through. That's Stark. <laughs> okay, so answer this for me. Is Daenerys for the people or is Daenerys for herself? That's what I'm starting to wonder. I think that um, I'm, I, I used to think that it was for the people, and now it's just the, some of the things that she says. I understand that she's got to be a ruler, you know, um, but she's starting to worry me. She's starting to worry me. Uh, and you said, you know, you've called her Mad Queen Danny a couple times. I think that she is going, to, I want her to say, that, I want to say that she'll stay true to the path that she's on it's to like, you know, basically United Kingdom. But I don't think, I think she's going to get carried away. I think that she's going to, I think that she's going to be more about, okay, I'm here now. Like she can't come all this way and make a fool of herself. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I feel like at this point, and she doesn't know Westerosi people. I mean, she spent time with the Dothraki. She spent time with, uh, you know, the people of Marine and Astapor and Yunkai and all those places. But she's, uh, she's, doesn't know any Westerosi other than um, her traitorous little handmaid that got locked in the thing with um, what's his name and uh, Jorah. <laughs> Zara Zoendaxos. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think that she wants to be about the people. I don't think that. I think that ultimately there's just a lot riding on her, or um, her right now, and there's a lot of pressure for her to save face and preserve her reputation and stuff. So. I don't know that she will continue to be for the people. I would like her to be, but I just, I get in hints that she's, she's turning mad. (laughs) She actually reminds me of Stannis now. Mm. She's focused on the fact that this is her birthright. 
Yeah. Cause she's meant to be the leader. Um, Which we talked about before. It's not actually true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> we can get into that too. The yeah. succession. But, um, she's focused on this being her rightful place for her to be queen. There are no slaves for her to free. Nope. The small folk are not waiting for her. Nope. So it's not really about them. She talks about bringing peace, but she's coming there for war. Yeah. And she's yeah. Getting, right. And if she's making allies, you know, these Tyrell soldiers and Dornish soldiers, they're coming from somewhere. Um, and, that, you know, that's how Stannis was as well. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see if when John goes down to tell her about the trouble in the north, uh, beyond the wall, is she going to be just like Stannis and go there and deal with that first? Mm -hmm. Or is she going to not think about that and focus on claiming her throne? I think that if she's like, I think she should vote. I would, what, I'm, I'm so excited for her and John to meet. And I think that uh, if she's smart, she'll focus on the war in the North. Cause like we said, it's going to take a hell of a lot of time to be able to know, to mobilize anybody from the South to come up. And I think that, they would just, I honestly don't think that Cersei and uh, anybody at King's Landing will believe anything they have to say about an army of the dead or the White Walkers. Because like we were talking about before, like these are things that they read about and that these are scary stories that people's like nursemaids were telling them as children. They don't believe that this exists. But if she were to do that, she'd have to split her forces, no? Well, she still needs to protect Dragonstone and she still, you know, the Lannister ar army we now know is coming for them. Yeah, well, I mean, we can. I think this is a question we should ask again at the end of the episode. Okay. <laughs> Just because she's got to rethink things now. Were you surprised to see Melisandre on Dragonstone? Nope, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> I, I, like when we, when we were recording last time, I was like, I thought that she was going to be there. I thought that she was going to be there. And oh, she right, wasn't. you did say that. And I was disappointed. So when when they said that the priestess from Ashai, I was like, <laughs> and then it made me really happy. Um but now I'm actually, well, we can talk about her, but it, um, it made me happy. And then it made me think, oh, shit, there are potential problems with that, with her being there. Um, Why? Because if Jon Snow is journeying to uh, Dragonstone to meet Daenerys with Sir Davos and Melisandre's there, how does that, how does that change things? You know, Melisandre's basically there. She's saying, hey, hey, you know, my queen, I'm... I'm here. And the funny thing is because like Danny doesn't know anything about her. Varys mm -hmm. obviously has heard of her. And uh, it's like, it's like Danny said, she chose an auspicious day to show up because they're pardoning people for serving the wrong ruler, <laughs> you know? So like before he could even get out in his little cat's claws and be like, but she was, was Stannis. And you know, she's like, no, actually we just had this conversation. <laughs> she's obviously, she's here to help. So hush your mouth. Um, but she's basically saying, listen, you got to call this guy. He, knows what it is he's seen the army you know let him she's basically saying let him tell you what he's seen you know and um you know she's talks she talks about the prince who was promised and miss sandy you know channeling aemon targaryen in uh -huh. from the books right it's, yeah it's prince, like it's, it's a translation it's like it's a translation it could be prince or princess and um i thought it was interesting that uh, Melisandre didn't confirm that it was Danny. <laughs> that you know. Well, I think she knows better now. Mm -hmm. You know, she was so dead set on calling Stannis the prince that was promised that she was blind to everything else. Yeah. And I think she's learned from that mistake. That you know, yeah. she, her prophecies aren't perfect. Yeah, I mean, she said it too. She said prophecies are dangerous, and she's yeah. right. But I like that. I mean, I like that she didn't say, "Yeah, Danny, it's you." So she left it open that it could still be John, and um, I thought that was awesome. I couldn't understand when she was talking about John to Danny. I couldn't understand why one of the things she mentioned, one of the things she didn't mention, was that she brought him back from the dead. No, she didn't. She's waiting for John to tell that story. She's waiting for John and Sir Davos because she, like, I, I thought that she was going to tell it too. But who is this red priestess coming out of nowhere? Uh, she's got to have, like, she's got to let it come from the horse's mouth. She does. And I think it's stupid. Like, John didn't say 
did, did John, oh, okay, we'll talk about John later. But um, I think she's got to let it come from his mouth. And I think there's no way that any that that, like, who, why would they believe her? That's true. Why would they believe her? She just showed up on their fucking doorstep like, hey, I'm a red priestess. <laughs> Listen, you got to talk to this dude because he knows what's up. And she's like, I just got here. Who the fuck are you? You know, like, you know, like Danny's being gracious. I thought that she was actually more gracious to Melisandre than um, than she deserved, maybe, for being somebody that they, you know, just showed up out of nowhere. Um, you know, like, I would be as distrustful as I would have been as distrustful of her as I was with Varys in the, in the conference room. I also worry about Melisandre being... Well, Melisandre's not focused on Westerosi politics. She's fo- focused on the war against the dead. But I worry about Danny being able to get support when she has this red priestess on her side because the mm-hmm. Westerosi don't want that god. They and don't. I think that it matters. Um, but I think I think that's a good point. I think that um, when I saw the when I saw her there and she was saying that you know the red priest the the red priest helped them a lot. Um, and Essos while they were there, I thought it was really interesting uh, because they did. They got, they got that red priestess to go and basically go around, go amongst the people and talk about who Danny was and let them know, like basically reunite them under the fact that she was, you know, had the fire god's favor. Um, and I think that that type of propaganda is what they would need in Westeros uh, before she would be able to do anything. I know the small folk have their seven. Um, I mean, everybody's got their seven, and they've got their the North has got their old gods, but I think that the smoothest move um, would be to start planting those seeds, start planting the seeds. But people, uh, people, in Western, people in Westeros aren't going to care if if she has the Lord of Light's um, favor because they see him as a demon. That's true. She does have dragons, <laughs> right? So not only is she coming, she from yeah, another okay, country. I can see what you're saying. Right, I see what you're saying. they've already yeah. seen Cersei using um, xenophobia to get mm-hmm. the nobles yeah. on her side. So she yeah. shows up with a foreign army, and what people see is a, a witch mm-hmm. talking about this demon god. And not just any witch, but um, what's his name, Stannis' witch, right? Who's, who's obviously led to no good. Um, so oh, I see and- that as being a problem more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I, I can see that. I can see that. I think it would probably be still worth it to start to like plant seeds because people are tired, you mm-hmm. know, like their gods, as far as they know, are not answering them and forsaking them. They're praying to the mother and the warrior mm-hmm. and, um, and to the Smith and their families are just being destroyed and their husbands are coming back maimed. And maybe it's time for a new God. Maybe it's time for a change, especially with the step of the Baylor being, you know, no more, you know, if you were, where were your, where were your gods then? Where were the seven then to protect the people and the, everybody who was inside? Um, I think that it, I think that Westeros could be ready for a change in religion, but I totally see what you what you mean. Right. Um, I mean, they've I, had this religion for you know a thousand years. Yeah. I I don't imagine that change would come that easily, especially since Thoros was there for so long with the yeah, king. Yeah, but that, I, I mean, Thoros. yes, he was a drunk. <laughs> That's true. He was a drunk hanging out with a drunken king. He was a drug hanging out with him, lighting his sword on fire for fun. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's not the best example, but I think that uh, I think it could, it could be a useful t- it could be a useful tool. Um, oh, the other thing I was gonna say about John and Davos coming is that she's gonna have to answer for Shireen. Yes. When they do, because Danny's not gonna like that at all. No, she's Danny's not. not gonna like that at all. So I don't know. I mean. Does Melisandre make it out of the next episode? Because John, John did say, I was thinking about this this morning, I was like, he did say if she ever comes south. <laughs> or ever, no, ever, if he saw north, her north. If he saw her north, that he would behead her himself. But he's not seeing her north, he's seeing her south, but she's still got, the, she's still got that blood on her hands. And um, Davos encounter, encountering her again, and John encountering her again, is not going to, that's something she should be wary of. I don't think, uh, do you think she has the balls to be there for that meeting? If I was her, yes. I'd be happy. I she does. She, I think she has the balls to be there for that meeting. I think so because she, um, she's she be, she believes what she believes, and I don't think she's afraid of death. So I think she'll I think she'll be there. I don't think she'll have a problem with being there. I think she'll face them 
head on and not care because what she cares about is the war against the dark. Yeah. So Danny said John must come and he must bend the knee. Yeah, so that now we too. know where she stands on that. Yeah, that was she made that <laughs> super clear. <laughs> but since you know, the- since she's willing, since she's willing to have Yara be queen of the Iron Islands with you know with caveats, why do you think she, do you think she would be willing if John joined forces with her to let him have the North? Because I, I mean, the Iron Islands. Should. Well, the Iron Islands are like nothing. It's like these tiny place. Yeah, they don't really have much going on there. The North Maybe that's is like a third of the kingdom. Yeah, she's probably thinking the Iron Islands are inconsequential. Like, okay, you have these little pieces of rock that nobody else cares about. Right. Uh, take that, take that. You know what I mean? But I, I think it would be smart to let John keep the North, um, even though it's a third just, of the kingdom. Just historically, because nobody cares about the North except for the Northerners. But it's because it's a, a third of the kingdom, part, but it's though. just. But it's just like land masses that nobody wants, you know, like nobody likes the frozen north. Nobody wants to live up there except for the northerners who've been there. Um, everybody but, else wants to. But now the, the, the Riverlands, the Riverlands support the north. Well, no, they're all dead. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say the waiting, Tullys. I'm, I'm still waiting for Blackfish to come back. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Do you think he, he's dead? <laughs> I'm not convinced. I'm Convinced. He's dead, honey. I'm sorry. Let it go. Come he's, on, he's dead. friend. <laughs> he's dead. Fine. Fine. I, I'm still carrying my blackfish banner. Um, yeah. yeah. No. I no. They're. I mean, they are their only ally. I mean, what is North? They've got the North and the Vale. Yeah. Which, um, I mean, we keep saying that no, but I mean, again, this episode, nobody mentioned the Vale either. So that's really interesting. Well, Bayless um, just mentioned, you know, his army. Yeah. But I mean, like south of, um, south of like Winterfell, nobody's talking about the Vale. Right. Okay. Um, weird. I'm trying to think if anything else happened in that, that scene. Um, I mean, thank the shout out to Tyrion for standing up to every, for everybody. Mm-hmm. And for making this meeting possible, because I don't think anybody else would have convinced him if he had, if um, he didn't say what he said and uh, kind of, you know, vouch for both. I mean, Varys, I don't think it mattered, but for him to vouch for Melisandre talking about John was 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 crucial. Um, but she does want him to bend the knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to Tyrion. So John, got, John gets Tyrion's letter. I mean, the next scene is really just them talking about Tyrion's letter. Um, yeah, her and John and son and son Davos. And Davos, sorry. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, their their reactions are what you expect. I mean, Sansa wasn't a hard ass about it. She does say that he was kind, and she he's not like the other Lannisters. I mean, but they're all right in thinking that it's a trap. And mm-hmm. um, I think we can kind of skip through this scene, really. Yeah, there's not a whole lot. There's not, there's really not much. There. Not, not a real a lot, a lot that was happening there, um, other than what you would expect. I don't see anything hidden in there. Like, yeah, he mentions Dothraki horde and you know Legion of Unsullied, but that to me just screams allies. <laughs> like if John is smart, it just screams allies, and it's not until later that you actually see that he has a, a true motivation and incentive for 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 taking this meeting. It could it could <laughs> also. Um... Not just not allies, just allies, but a warning. But a war- yeah, I mean, it's obviously. I, I didn't a see war- it as a threat. I saw it I more as a warning. You know that there's yeah. an army here. Yeah, no, obviously that that's I think at face value that's what it means. But I think if you're looking deeper and you're looking for allies here, suddenly you're getting a message from this new queen, and you may not know much about her, but I think it's probably, you know, it's it's worth. I think it's worth taking a meeting um, to see what it's about, but also being very cautious because. You know, as they mentioned later on, it's not it's the last time the Starks rode off to speed a Targaryen. It did not end well for them. Every time Every the Starks time. ride south, they die. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. in King's Landing, we see Cersei has very, very few people at court. Very few. And Huge the only difference. family that's recognizable are the Tarleys. Yeah. I'm like scanning the crowd. I'm like, I don't know. Everybody else is obviously dead. But who's still here? Um, and you've got Randall Tarley of Hornhill. 
and his even, forgettable and, son. <laughs> and no, they got a whole new dick on and just like right. I was, I like, was like, who? Who is this? Who is this old person? This is no. It cracks me up when they when they cast, cast people. Yeah. They're like just because he was only there for one episode doesn't mean we're not going to notice that he's a different person. <laughs> and it always makes me wonder why that person got replaced. You know, it could just be that they picked up another gig or whatever. But yeah, like who they knows? Always, I mean, they always like get a new person who looks nothing like the previous actor. I think that the uh, I think that the the previous actor wasn't just an. I mean, he's got to be as opposite as Sam as possible. You know what I mean? And he wasn't just meathead enough. This guy was just like he reminds me of um the fucking redheaded knight in Sword of the Stone, the one that's trying to like that Worf is his uh, squire. I can't remember his name. <laughs> K K K. That's who he reminds me of. K from Sword of the Stone. And I was just like, oh god, who is this meathead? And Jamie like plays him so hard. He's like Rickard. Like, <laughs> he's like Rickard. He's like oh he's like oh yeah that's it. And he like completely dismisses it. It was awesome. Jamie being his having his moment of stuck upness, and I I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, Cersei's on the throne. She's basically doing what you're, you know, practicing her little xenophobic ways, being like it's us against them, it's us against them. <laughs> Cersei I'm Trump. Here. <laughs> you know, yeah, dude, so many fucking parallels. <laughs> yeah. It's us against them and these dirty and unwashed, the you know, savages, and savages, yeah. slaves. Yeah, she's playing into their their nationalism, I guess you want to say, to um to to bring them together. But it's just like, as I thought, I didn't think about this the first time, but I, as I was watching again um, last night, I was like, but I don't think that like she can say everything that she wants. But people still know that she's a crazy bitch who blew up people just for not listening to her, you know, for just for just disagreeing with her and having an alternate, you know, worldview. And you sit there and you listen to her because you're summoned because you are the queen, but you have no reason to like ask, like, trust you know, her? to trust her or to like, you know, forsake your your oaths to your, um, you know, to your to your liege lord because who's held your, who's had your back over all these years? It's not Cersei. It's right. obvious that Cersei wants you, and it's obvious that she needs you. Not uh, only that, but she murdered Marjorie, mm-hmm. and the Reach loved her. Everybody loved her. Right. So The only know, person who didn't love Marjorie was Cersei. And so, and so the Tarly Tar- being from the Reach, and these and other the- lords, I think, possibly are from the Reach. Yeah, he murdered, she murdered their queen. Right. They Straight murdered up and someone down. who was really loved by them so yeah. that's more reason why i would imagine that there could be some hesitation i mean because of that she had to appeal to like xenophobia because that's why should they trust her why should they do anything for her when she oh. murdered not only marjorie but um or their lord yeah right? um what's mace, his name mace tyrell, mace tyrell. She oh, murdered their liege lord, as well as the lords and ladies of so many other houses. Right, right. But I mean, so yeah, she murdered. She murdered their liege family. People that, and they and you know and that were they were a family that was loved. It wasn't you know, and she yeah. murdered them for what? For what? Her own ego. <laughs> Just to Why be queen. Why they trust her? Just to be queen. Like, is, are the people in the reach angry at her? They fucking should be. It should be, but there's not something they can talk about because there are little birds everywhere. Yeah. Do you, I mean, also with Olena taking Daenerys' side, do they, like like you said, do they follow the queen or do they follow their liege? Mm Mm-hmm. No, especially knowing that they're, that Marjorie was murdered. And I keep saying Marjorie specifically because while, you know, Mace was kind of seen as an oath, but Marjorie, you know, Marjorie was really well loved. Mm-hmm. She was groomed her whole life to be queen. And she put a lot of work into it. Whether, you know, even though it's revealed later that she just did it because she had to do it for politics and she really hated being with the small folk or whatever she said to the um the High Sparrow. Um she was well liked. The nobles liked her, the common folk liked her. Um it's really it's really a tragedy. Like when it even like every time you watch that scene, um where the wildfire is like exploding through the stuff, you're just like you just look at her face. You're just like, man, I wish she would have got out. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's horrible. Stop it's horrible. Eating. I know. I'm trying to chew this really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I would be surprised 
if small folk in the reach did not want revenge for Marjorie's death. Mm-hmm. Why not? No, I'm saying I, I think they do want revenge. Oh, they do. I thought you said you did. If you'd be surprised if they, oh, okay. I'd be surprised I, if I they did it. Is what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think you're right. They they have to want it. She was she was good to them. She took care of the people. And I don't I don't think that any I don't think that any any of the remaining lords can throw their support behind Cersei without facing open rebellion on mm-hmm. their own lands. That's... And that's what I think Randall Tarley knows. And I think that's what Jamie and the other ones are not taking into account because they don't give a shit about the small folk. But the small folk, they're the, you know, they're the, they're the, they're, army. They're the army. They're they're the motor behind this, this big machine. And without them, you can't do anything. And for their, you know, for Randall Tarley to, like, go home and be, go home to Whore Hill, uh, Whore Hill, <laughs> to, Whore, to Horn Hill and gather up his people and be like, all right, we're going to fight for the queen who you know, killed our queen, but we're going to fight for her anyway because he's, these people, I mean, and Randall Tarley, of all people, we know that he hates foreigners, mm-hmm. you know? Like, look at the way that he reacted to Gilly when she was there, when he found out that she was a wildling. We know he hates foreigners. So he's like, she's like, Jamie and them are appealing to that part of his just nature. Um, that's something that's inherent in him. And having to put that against the fact that he, they basically decimated his his lead, the liege lord house and you know promising him to you know warden of the south i don't think is actually that attractive to him that's actually I what i was going to bring up next he doesn't give i don't think he gives a fuck i don't think but he's I don't a know. man i'm not i, I don't mean, know it's tempting though you know with position of power but then at the other hand on the other hand we've seen you know better men take that it's it's tempting though hmm? elena's old as far, Elena as, is old. as far as we know, there aren't there any aren't other. Any, um, there aren't any Tyrells, other heirs because you know they didn't include all of the book Tyrells. No, they didn't. And even if they had, it would have been you know that's still a tough marriage. Um, well, if they that. had, there'd be two other heirs. Yep. So you know it would still it would be a different situation. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. That's why it was no problem for him to join the. Um, right, he had King's two Guard. older brothers. <laughs> Um, yeah, I um I I think that it's I mean it's the it's the only thing that you could offer him to make him potentially consider it. You know what I mean? To like, oh, well I get to be warden of the south after this is all over, but nobody likes to fight on the losing side and and right that now, side Elena side fight. has dragons. And now Elena, they finally believe in dragons and they've heard the best, rumors of Essos. But I mean, but then we get our our favorite maester but it's a little bastard, a uh, Kyvern, uh, saying, you know, well, we've considered this problem and right. uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. Because last time, last episode, we talked about, like, does nobody take the fucking dragon seriously? But they're taking the dragon seriously. And they're also and- taking the stories from Esso seriously now. Although now they're, you know, they're discussing it as just Danny crucifying people out of boredom. You know, no, kind crucifying of nobles. It. Crucifying, right. no, yeah, crucifying, crucifying nobles. nobles. You know, and but that's how. What other stance are they going to take on it? You know, that's right. that's what the nobles are going to see. They're going to say, "Oh my God, they took the people who were in charge and they killed them." Not they took that these. They not that they took these cruel slave owners and crucified them. You know, um, or that they did it as a result of having you know having a, crucified a, 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 children. Ha- exactly as a direct <laughs> reaction to the fact that they came in. They came into the city. And there are children that were crucified, pointing the way to, you know, to dance to the slave. You're like, come on, of course, of course, they're not going to tell that side of the story. Um, it doesn't well, no, suit. You got to have your war. It doesn't further her. Exactly, it doesn't further her cause. And it, I mean, I think that we're seeing propaganda employed in a big way these last couple episodes that we haven't seen before. It's, it's all matter, Cersei but... has at this point. Yeah, she doesn't she inspire does. loyalty at all. Nope. Why no one she... likes her. No one likes her. And I have to just throw this out there that, like, show Cersei is ruthless, but book Cersei, ho- Cersei, holy shit, she's a whole other level. Things that she's done in the books that you don't find out about on the show was just, like, horrifying. They definitely made show Cersei more sympathetic. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to feel any type of sympathy for book Cersei. She's fucking crazy. Crazy. And at this point, she's still got all her kids. Well, she's still got two. No, she's still got two. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm looking forward to her total 
degeneration in the books, but I I digress. <laughs> Let's go to Old Town. Old Jorah Town. may be mad in six months or less. <laughs> oh, he should have cuffed. What did you say last time? And the maester said it too. He should have cut off. He should have cut arm. it off. Like once it was once he saw it coming up on his wrist, he should have cut his arm off at the elbow. Yep. He should have. At least he, then he would have had some hope. You know, he could have found some nice somebody with some milk of the poppy and like went to sleep and woke up stubby and you know, like he didn't do that. I uh, he's he's determined. He's determined and the maester's like, listen, dude, like had you been here a few months ago, maybe we could have helped you, but this shit is too advanced. Like right. you're coming here with full blown <laughs> dragon scale. And grayscale. Uh, grayscale. I would like dragon scale. Full blown grayscale. <laughs> and you know, it's it's too late for you. You're, and he's, you know, and they and he's they he mentions that there have been other cases that they've been able to maybe help a little bit and um, do something about. But Jorah is just too far gone. Yeah, and, and I mean, yeah. you know, they kind of he said he could live for another ten years, but you know, he'd yeah, be completely insane. So you know, he hinted at maybe maybe suicide is the answer since you refuse to cut off your arm. Exactly, and he and he gives him that option. He's like, you know, you're because you're a knight. I'm not going to just ship you away to become a stone man. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you decide. How are you, you going to spend your on, night? <laughs> you know, you're going to fall on your sword, or are you catching a boat in the morning? You know. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sam is here, and just not willing to 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 believe or accept that there is no other way because he's been reading. He's <laughs> Sam. <laughs> he does. He reads and he looks for solutions, and he tries to bring up Shireen. And like I, the 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 maester stops him. He's like, "Wait, are you an expert in this? Do you know about the advanced <laughs> growth of a uh, of the of grayscale in uh, infants and adults?" And he's like, "No." So you do you remember? Do you remember people were saying that they thought dragon glass would cure it? And I was like yep. firmly opposed to that. Yep, yep. I'm glad that seems to not be the case because I'm still firmly opposed to dragon glass <laughs> suddenly being this cure, like the tussin of of yeah, Westeros. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, we we got back to Old Town later, but oh, one cross- thing I was I was wondering how because obviously Sam like the first time that Sam found out, um, well they didn't know he didn't know who he was, and so I was like, how are they going to find out that they they know common people? How are they going to find out that you know this he was from the Night's Watch and that, that your dad was in charge? And but you know Sam he found a way to figure. He's like, you know, is there anybody you should write to? And then you get that big reveal, and I was like, <laughs> "Finally, yes." Okay, Kyburn, go. Kyburn's crossbow. Boom! Channel Lord of the Rings all day, all day. <laughs> yeah, sorry, not, uh, the Hobbit all day. Sorry, not Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, I mean, what else? He, ha- yeah, I mean, he heard Danny's dragons could be wounded, so if they can be wounded, they could be killed, and obviously, there's no flaw in that logic. So. Um, to have this giant spear throwing thing and to see it just like completely rocket through, through. Like, rocket <laughs> through Blair and the, the, the great dread skull. I was just like, holy shit. Like this is the biggest dragon of all time. And it was just like, bing, just like he popped a balloon. It once just penetrated. It was crazy. And it made me afraid. That's Drogon, why I'm worried. Drogon's going to die this season. <laughs> we should put up on the death pool. Choke your uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't see him making it. Like I had, I actually put um, on the death pool. There's um, the three dragons are on there, and I put Viserion. But um, I don't see. I don't. The one of the dragons has got to go. It's gonna be Drogon. Mark my words. He's, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Drogon will die in the battle at the end of the season. Yep. Maybe sooner. Maybe maybe that's what make Danny go goes crazy because I don't think she'll be able to. That's that's a huge hit. Um, you know, it's Game of Thrones. Don't get attached. Maybe Drogon will die and it'll make her really crazy and she'll just burn everything. Yeah, I mean, it could be. It could be. I mean, because you only that's the thing about. I mean, are they going to break book rules and have her pair with more than one dragon? Like that would everybody would be fucking pissed if that happened. You know. <laughs> yeah, all the book like, readers will be. Oh my be god! Frothing at the mouth. You can't do that. Um, she's never ridden the other dragons, though. No, she's never has. She never has. Um, Will John ride a dragon now that we know he's Targaryen? Are we going to get? 
can we talk about that at the end of the episode if we're going to see more yeah. John Targaryen stuff? Yeah. Um, yes, we can. So at Dragonstone, they're making their plans, and they remind me again of how much I hate Ilaria Sand. Dude. I hate her. Do we hate her in general, or do we hate her casting? No, I hate her in general, like, as yeah. a person. Yeah. She's I think so she was annoying. casted just fine. She's, I think, she's just so, she's so obnoxious. <laughs> And you, you, <laughs> she you feels learn, no like, guilt about murdering an innocent child. No, none at all. And then, like that's, and I feel like been, Danny, Danny should be wary of her because of that. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> she murdered. She murdered an innocent child. Yep. Because and Tyrion of her last calls name. her out. Mm-hmm. And, and Tyrion calls her out because you know he he's he's been really good about not getting you know family political mm-hmm. in these situations. But when she says that. He's like, listen, that girl was innocent. Yep. She she murdered, innocent. So she murdered an innocent child because of her name. She murdered her own nephew. Well, I guess nephew-in-law and her yep. brother-in-law. Because yep. of what? Because she wanted to start a war. They hadn't done anything evil. Other nope. than needing their army. There is nope. just no reason Danny should There was no her. reason. I mean, if you, go back to, if you go back to it, her lover, who was uh, the viper... <laughs> he sacrificed question. himself. He's, he was he not sacrificed murdered. himself, but it was a trial by combat, and he fucking lost. Right. It was. He knew what he was getting into. He went against the fucking mountain because he wanted to get revenge for his sister, which is totally noble and understandable. But he lost in a fair and square trial. I mean, it was the mountain, but he lost in a trial by combat. The thing so is, he, he could have won. He got cocky. He got so cocky. Despite she, it being the mountain, he, he did that to himself. She and knows he signed that. Up and for I, it. Exactly. Like she and Ilaria knows that. She even says that. Well, that come those words come through her daughter's mouth later on in the episode. But um, he, that he got careless, and um, mm-hmm. she's got no reason to got such a to have such a chip on her on her shoulder, other than to be mad that. Uh, I mean, I understand you can be mad about it, but he lost in a fair and square battle. I will, well. Any amounts, any battle against the mountain, I can't call fair and square. But he was no, winning. No, but it, it was fair because he was winning. Yeah, he. So anyway, her her whole vengeance thing about him is just it gets on my nerves. I get that she's upset that he's dead, but he signed up for that. No one made him do it. Nope. He's the one who got cocky and got yep. himself killed. He fucked up. So Marcella didn't need to die because of that. Nope, it wasn't her fault. Poor girl. I also girl. think it's smart of Tyrion to want to use a Westerosi army for the siege of King's Landing Absolutely. because of what because of uh, ouch because he knows that um, Cersei will appeal to the xenophobia exactly and not just Cersei right. appealing to the xenophobia but just in general that in general yeah people want it they they're gonna be uh, they need to be fighting I mean they kind of be fighting against their own otherwise you get everybody united under like we're being invaded by foreigners you know. And, and that's that's a powerful, powerful argument. And he knows Cersei so well. Like, he called it. He calls it, you know? Like, you see that scene, and then he's like, there he is, doing, saying exactly mm-hmm. what she was going to say, making exactly those moves. Uh, but I think that something that we should be worried about is the fact that, you know, he doesn't know anything about Kyburn, you know? Right. Um, and that's he's a dangerous person to have in your ear for whatever his motivations are. Um, Who knows? Who, and yeah, who knows? And but it it was fun to see um, their war planning, and it was fun to see you know all these women around the table planning the, these moves. Um, and I think that Tyrion's plan is it theoretically was pretty sound. Like mm-hmm. this is a part of the episode where I was like, I start like I had minor freakouts up you know throughout the rest of it, but this is the part. I'm like sitting by myself, like in my room, like projecting it on the wall, and I just start screaming, like "Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him!" When they start like going through their plans to take ca- Caster Lior, because we just talked about this, and I was like, "Yes, mm-hmm. that's the fucking move." Um, now I'm worried. But then, I, yeah, it was like the plan was such a good plan that I was like, "Okay, who's gonna fuck this up?" <laughs> yeah. Also, Nikki, who holds the Stormlands? I don't know. I don't know who's in charge. Um. <laughs> The Baratheons Last... are all dead. Barath... <laughs> yeah, who's down there? Who else? Who are the other lords in the Stormlands on the show? Do they ever mention any? I can't think of any. Huh. I can't. I can't even name another house at the moment. 
Um, we can look that up later. Uh, that'd be worth a look. Elena's advice about clever men, I also really liked. Yep. She's outlived yep. them all because she ignores them. <laughs> yeah. When she said, be a dragon, you know what I thought of? What? The Wiz. When Diana Ross is singing the Be a Lion song. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. I, I thought of that and I, I had a good little giggle. Um. <laughs> In my own way, I'm a I don't know. Is there anything else right. you want to talk about with their... Um, just real quick. The other noblemen, Bannermen of the Stormlands, include Buckler, Karen, Connington, Don Darien, mm. Errol, Estermont, Penrose, Selmy. I mean, these are all swans. So basically... Are... So all nobody. Of the, yeah, all of all They're... people that are dead. Because, I mean, they, they never talked about the Selmys. Yep, they never talked about the Selmys. They never talked about Tarth other than, you know, Brienne's dead was not going to put up the ransom right. for her. Connington's uh, not in it. Onyx is not in it, and Don Darian is. Don so Darian doesn't even remember who he is. Yeah. So, so that's it. Yeah. Yep. So the Stormlands Storm are, are just being ignored right now, I guess. Yeah, they're just up for grabs. Um, something you just said reminded me of something. Um, yeah, I like that Elena told her to be a dragon. I think that that's actually... I mean, whatever that means, it's good advice. And... Um, Something that we get, we'll talk about. Let me just make a note. Um, just okay. Never mind. I'll mention that later. Real time. Uh, Do you want to talk about um, Grey Worm and Miss Sandy's sex scene? Um, yes and no. I thought it was <laughs> awesome and super cute. Um, I mean, I kept wondering. Like everybody, I'm sure was like, "Are they gonna show something?" I was waiting too. I, mean, I, I think like, it's I clear want, now I, that that it's all, it's all. I mean, in the books, I'm pretty sure they said it's all gone. Yeah, that they take it all. Yeah, I think the show. I think in the show as well. Yeah, um, I still wanted to see. But, you know, <laughs> there there are plenty of other ways to have sex without a penis. Exactly, there are. So, it's not as we as they you know as they sh- and it's just like the moment that we all kind of like you wanted to happen, you needed it to happen, and it did, and it was so sweet, and, and it cemented for me that Grey Worm is going to die this season. Yeah, me too. I was like, oh, if she hadn't come in, I was like, all right. They, I was like, once you, they had their goodbye sex, basically. Mm-hmm. And He's for me, sure. I was like, I was happy, but I was like, well, Unsullied is going to need a new commander. And we don't know anybody else from the Unsullied had <laughs> except Grey Worm. So it's time to introduce somebody, you know, or, or they all get wiped out. Like, or do you know, maybe, I don't know. No, maybe I don't think all of the Unsullied will get wiped out, but. Grey Worm is going to go. You're like, gonna die, man. Those are our predictions, guys. I think a lot of Unsullied are gonna get killed. I think so too. I think a lot of Dothraki are gonna get killed. I I mean, what we're thinking, we're not, I think something that they're not really considering, like even though they're gonna be south, winter is here, and these are two cultures, as far as we know, who have never wintered either. No. So. Certainly not the Dothraki. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. And I don't, that's not something that people... We keep talking about the Lannister army and all that kind of stuff, but Daenerys' army is not... They've never seen a winter either. Uh, they've uh, The other ones have at least seen a winter. They've never seen a winter. And that's going to be a huge, li- uh, huge liability, I think. Um, they should start preparing them for that. It's it's just an, gonna... Again, it's one of those things that no one seems to be thinking about. Well, Jamie mentioned it last uh, episode. <laughs> the fact that winter that it's winter now. But it's just another thing that people don't seem to be considering yeah. in all of these plans. But, you know, when John gets down there, he can remind them. Yeah. <laughs> John He's... Snow. John Snow. Winter Snow's. is coming. <laughs> He's so intense. <laughs> He's a fucking John. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I People were actually, I saw that people were mad that they that they wasted good episode time on such an extended love scene between the two. But let our black people do stuff, okay? God damn it. <laughs> let them have a love scene. For fuck's sake. <laughs> um, okay, so back in Old Town, they're talking about the maester who 
tried to cure a grayscale and caught it <laughs> himself and died. Yeah. Dum dum. Sad. But there have been two cases of it being cured. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, as we know, it, it involves carving off the burnt pieces as if it's toast. Just <laughs> <laughs> I thought of you when they when they cut from that piece of like Sam digging into the grayscale and then the chicken pot pie. <laughs> oh, it was so gross because I love chicken pot pie. <laughs> I was like, oh, Tanya, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. It was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. I mean, Mace, the Mace is trying to persuade. She's basically telling Sam, don't do it. It's not allowed. It's forbidden. It's too dangerous. And Sam is saying, don't it's care. I'm going to try. It's worth it. Who Will else Sam is going to try? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. No, I don't think so. I think that that'd be too obvious. And, do you um, think Jorah is going to be cured? No, I don't. I, want I him think to die. that. I think that he will make some kind of progress, but I don't think that he'll be cured all the way. I think he'll be maybe cured enough to leave the Citadel, and then something's going to happen, and he'll die some other way, or it'll come back. Or maybe he'll give Danny Grayscale, which would be crazy. Oh, that would suck. I don't think they'll give Danny Grayscale. No, it takes too long. But he has to have some other type of purpose, though. Yep. The fact that he's still alive and that Sam is trying to cure him. Means there's exactly. Else there's there's something else that he's got to do. You're right. Um what that is, I don't know. Maybe he's got to be, be the head of an army. Maybe he's got to, you know, finally, he's fine. I mean, he's finally back in Westeros, you know, uh, right, the entire right. time that we've known him, he hasn't been there because, you know, he was he's banished. Exiled, but all the people who exiled him are dead. Yep. Except whatever's left of his family who aren't going to welcome him back. Uh-uh. Nope. Not he's, at all. I don't not, think he would dare. A, I don't think he would dare challenge Lyanna. Mormont. No, 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 no. As far as he was, I mean, he was, he was basically, what happened, Jorah was banished because he, oh wait, so I think which also was really interesting, but I totally forgot about that, is that um, Jorah defeated Jaime Lannister at a, at one of the, um, I'm going to call them the Joust festivals, I can't, at a tournament. Jorah defeated Jamie Lanner at a silent start of tournament, and because of that, he got the attention of some higher-up noble woman, who he then married and had a super expensive taste that he couldn't keep up with. So um, in order to basically satisfy this gold digger's demands, he started um, engaging in the slave trade. And that's why he was banished. And, uh, mm-hmm. for, for good fucking reason. So it's kind of ironic that he's with Daenerys, Breaker of Chains, when here he was selling people into slavery. Right, um, right. So, I mean, I guess he's come, his, his character in that, and it's come full circle. But I don't know. And he's already, well, no, not in, not in the show. He hasn't been sold into slavery. Hmm. No, that okay. already happened. Remember, that's how he yeah. ended up in the fighting pits. That's, okay, that's right. So in the show and in the books, he was sold into slavery. So I guess he's come full circle and, like, you know, made amends for that but there's no way that um that uh lion and mormont will fucking give a shit because he's still you know he's still so he's actually he, damaged goods so what is his purpose what, yeah what is yeah. his purpose now why why are we keeping him alive i don't know i think he's got to maybe if he if he is does make it out of the citadel then he's got to he's going to listen to sam and he's going to bring maybe news or word of dragonstone or Something like that in North because Sam is basically, he's the only person who can leave. Sam is still stuck at the Citadel for his training. He can't just take off and leave, you know what I mean? So it, Jorah would have to be the conduit through which um, any white walking, white walker fighting information is relayed. I, that would be my guess. But he does, well, hmm. yeah, I don't know. I mean, does Jorah even go north? I don't know. Or does, does he? he go south I mean, I, I can't imagine. I, yes, I was gonna say I can't imagine him going north, but he has to have some other purpose. Does he save Daenerys's life again? But Khaleesi is there. You know what I mean? Um, he's gonna. He's. She told him, "Get cured and come back to me." So if he gets allegedly cured, or you know, we does think he go that to he's Dragon cured and it, goes, and it goes back, he, that's where he's got to go. He's under orders from his queen. <laughs> <laughs> So poor Jara, Sam the pre-med intern, Ugh. doing this operation while reading it in a book. While reading it in a book. And Having never him bite down on a belt. Milk of the poppy exists. Why couldn't he give him some? Why, what was That's, he drinking, rum? <laughs> he made him drink rum. 
And that's what I was wondering too. I'm like, you're at the fucking Citadel. You can't score some milk of the poppy or it's something. Like you scored stronger. all that other stuff to fix him up. You couldn't get a little milk of the poppy for the guy. You know, like put him out. It was so that that to me was so funny. But then it's like you want to. George, I guess, has to suffer a little bit. He's had to go through some some intense <laughs> fucking pain because that was just like I was. And as they're saying that, he's like, "We're gonna have to cut it all away." And I'm looking at him like, "But you're covered in it." Right. I was like, "Um." <laughs> I don't know if I would have been able to do it. I would have looked. My sword would have suddenly been become like the most appealing option. Like, not being able to scream and just, like, biting onto a belt and just, like, that first scream that he gets when he, like, cuts all the video and he, like, the camera cuts to, like, close up his face and he looks up and he's just, like, gurgle screams. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just yeah. like, holy shit. I can't even imagine. I just bumped my arm on this chair a little bit, but I thought that that hurt. And I couldn't deal. I couldn't. It's crazy, but I'm glad that Sam is trying and I'm glad that Sam told him who he was. And that he's, he just lets him know. He's like, I was with your father when he died. And um, you should know that. I, you know, he doesn't, I like that Sam doesn't go into it because I don't know if he, if he knows how or who Jorah is, like we just explained. But, you know, it was, I, it was nice for that information to come out because we were just itching for him to say something. I mean, I was. He was so. writing, how, okay, how contagious is, is Grayscale? Because he was writing a letter to Danny. Which we can talk about in a second because I found out what's in it. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know. Could, like, <laughs> whatever. I, I'm, I'm just here thinking like grayscale outbreak throughout. West yeah, West. right. Is it like exactly? Is it is it like strep throat? Can anybody get it? Thirty four twenty. Yeah, I don't know. So his letter to Danny. Um, I. The Game of Thrones behind the scenes. They posted it online. Uh mm-hmm. huh. It reads, Khaleesi, I came to the Citadel in the last hope that the maesters could treat me as you ordered. Even with all their arts, I am beyond any cure but the, oh, but the grave. I have had a longer life than I deserved, and I only wish I could have lived to see the world you're going to build, standing by your side. I have loved you since the moment I met you. That's as far as he got in the letter. Aww. Oh, nothing. He's an old ass man, and she was a teenage girl. I can't stand Jorah the Explorer. <laughs> He's so gross. I mean, uh, like, like, I'm glad he got to put it out there. I'm glad that we got that explanation because I didn't even think to look up the letter. I totally forgot about that. Um, but the thing but is, him saying like, "I've loved but... you since the day I met you," it's total bullshit. Because no, he loved no, her he was... since the day. Stop eating. He left after... her since the day. <laughs> if he loved her since the day he met her. Why did he keep spying on her and keep reporting he lusted on her? He after her since the day he met her. Let's, let's keep it and, real. But he That's continued it. to report on her, though. Yep. No, he not love, lust. Right, he but went. either way, like, he's writing yeah. to her that he's loved her since the day he met her, even though well, after meeting her, he could be reported on her for months. Because he, he still want, he wanted to go home. He was hoping for a pardon. Yeah, well, that was tr- bigger motivation. He's trash, and he used to stop telling lies then. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Jorah. Uh, Tanya wants Jura dead. I want him dead. I wanted him dead for a long time. Yeah. And she also scolded me because I almost ate. <laughs> yes. No more eating during No more recording. eating. I, yes, yes. It's the rules. Um, yeah. No, I think that um, I, I like that we got, to, I like that you read the letter because um, it's nice to see what's in his mind. Does she, I mean, does she take him back for after a third time? Like, I hope if he, not. If He's he a stalker. Jorah yeah. is a stalker. It's true. He's like 50 years old. She's and like 20. True. He met her. She was like if, a teenager uh, who's being uh, sold, he's, who he's spying he's, on and reporting on, and he's claiming he loved her. She yeah. should have killed him. I don't know, man. I just but don't know. Like we're going to have that awesome cutting into Dragon's uh, Grayscale episode. Ew. The burnt, uh. to- the burnt toast episode. Uh, it's, it's like it's like cutting the burnt pieces off of like a one of those hams that have those like checkered you know like they like they had tie the strings around them. So oh got yeah, <laughs> they, the, they stick the cloves like in the. Oh uh, yeah, I don't fucking gross. I'm yeah, anti. I don't, eat, I don't eat ham. Me so. neither. Blech. Anyways, <laughs> Arya and hot pie. So people are still skeptical about, skeptical about dragons. As we saw with the two men in the beginning of the scene, they were mm-hmm. talking about whether or not she yes. had dragons, and they were so worried see, about the siege. They said, they're like, she's just trying trouble. to scare us. Right. 
Cersei's just crazy. She's just trying to scare us into doing what she wants. So it's still back and forth on whether people believe it. And they're talking, they're just worried about getting back to King's Landing before prices triple. Uh huh. So again, you know, small folk are just not in this. Nope. They're like, okay, well, we know we can make money. There's money to be made during a siege. And it's true. Smugglers make money. People get rich during sieges. So it is a great business opportunity. But the small folk always suffer. <laughs> Sorry, my fan fell. <laughs> um, but we get to see Arya and, uh, and still, Hot Pie. Okay, Arya is a fucking psycho. As he's talking about browning butter to make pies, she's thinking about the pie she made with human meat. And she's yeah, just like, oh, yeah. I didn't do that. She's like, like are you that. fucking kidding me? Oh, are you, have you been making pies? One or two. One or two. Bitch, are you kidding me? You psycho. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. I thought it was awesome. She's just like, oh, you're because you, you don't ever, you know, like you don't, you don't, there's not really ever an opportunity for that, that topic to come back up because nobody knows it was her, you know? So it was the first time that you get to be like, oh yeah, you get to kind of see like what went into that process and you get to kind of imagine it more. She, other than her telling Walder Frey that Black Walder was hard to carve, you know? Uh, <laughs> but did you <laughs> really need fun. insight into how she cooked human pie? I did we really? I think, I think it just shows that Arya is gone. Like but is she? Gone. How gone yes. is she? She's I was like, gone. she's gone, but then like she makes this decision to go back home, and I'm just like, oh. But that, that to me confirmed her on my Deadpool. <laughs> I was like, Arya, check. I've Grey never, I've never check. believed that she's, she'd make it to the end of the series. Maybe not this season, but I don't see her making it to the end of the series at all. Yeah. I, I didn't honestly become scared for her until she decided, until Hot Bye tells her, like, hey, your brother's king of the north, and um, this is all this shit's happening. She's like, why are you lying? And she's like, why would I lie about that? Right, she had no idea that the Boltons were dead. But, I mean, how would she, she know? No idea. No, there's no way. She was too busy cooking pies to Frey. <laughs> Ew. Ew, that's so gross. And uh, she had no, <laughs> but, like, once she made that decision, like, she, she, like, drops everything and decides to go home, in my mind, I was like, okay, Arya's gonna die. Because this is too busy. This is too much of a happy ending possibility to go back home and be reunited with her brother, who loves her and loved her more than all the other ones, and they have the close bond. It's just like for them to get back together. Like I, I would love to see it, but now I'm just well. I mean, that she's gonna, she's gonna die. Her and John are probably gonna miss each other. Yeah, because he's yep. heading south while she's heading north. Does she ever see John again? I don't. I don't think we get that. Is this like her when she missed seeing Catelyn because she showed up to the red wedding uh, and Catelyn was being killed? Uh, uh, the anguish and agony. I can't. Oh, that moment was just. That was such a tough moment. In that you're just like she's finally there. She's gonna see her mom, and her mom's being slaughtered, and her brother's being murdered, and the babies and their sister-in-law that she's never met have been stabbed to death, and they're all gurgling on their own blood and dying while the phrase around them. like no man it, that, that was such a heartbreaking moment um and you know they love to break our hearts so i don't see them i don't see the meeting i think that you're right maybe they'll miss each other um i don't know and i mean i would be interested in seeing an aria and sansa reunion but they're just so different now like they were already different but mm -hmm. only I mean, I think now they would get along. I mean, Sansa has changed yeah. her the way she treats John. She's a yeah. different person now. Arya's a different person now. But has she changed the way she treats John? Yes. Has she? She didn't even she barely even acknowledged John before. I don't even think they'd have scenes. Right. I don't even think they'd had scenes together until she made it to the wall. Oh, you know, that's a good point. I think you're right. She's definitely. Yeah, cause, like, cause I, I remember like the only time that I've ever heard like even her brothers John come out of them. I was like in the like very first season or something where she's like my half brother John. Right. It's always her half brother, her bastard brother. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So Arya's headed home. <laughs> so the North finally knows about the dragon glass at Dragonstone. Thank God. Um, Stannis had mentioned it, Sam, though. Because, yeah, Sam wrote right, the letter. Right, Sam wrote the letter, but Stannis had mentioned it, mentioned it before. Mm -hmm. Did, Did he, he mention, only mention it to that? Sam? I don't think so. I think that he may have mentioned it to maybe Davos or somebody. Just like, And it was a very casual, like, just a mountain of the shit that we don't have any use for, you know? Like, it wasn't well, something they, that, oh. they brought up, I feel like, I have to go back and check, but what I yeah. remember is that 
it was brought up and Stannis mentioned them having a mountain of it or just having a lot of it at Dragonstone, Dragonstone being covered in it, however he put it. Yeah. When did you say when he was at the wall with John? Yeah. But I can't remember if he ever said it to John or if it was just Stan. I'm um, Stan, uh, Sam. Yeah. Um, cause Sam knew about it. Yeah. So I don't know. It's like, did you just forget? I mean, I guess there's a lot going on, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, I think um, I don't. I don't remember them. I do remember him saying it to somebody. I don't remember who he said it to. Um, and here we get the letter from Sam saying, "Guess, guess what, guys? There's dragons." So, so now you've got the letter from from um, from Tyrion and the Queen, and you've got the letter from Sam, and you've got you've kind of got no choice but to make that move. And here we go again with John saying, "Listen, guys." Presenting the most, like, instead of, pre- I don't know. Like, I feel like there's a danger in being too honest sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he had to say that it came from Tyrion. Um, he could have just said because we got they, a they don't trust the Lannisters. Exactly. I think even bringing up his name was a stupid fucking move. I think well, that he could have just been, like, the new queen. John should have uh, a small council. Yes. Not everything needs to be... Not filtered everything through needs to the, be all a the huge numbers. meeting with all of the lords. He needs a exactly. small council. And then exactly. if he had a small council with Sansa on it, they wouldn't keep having these moments where they're contradicting each other in front of everyone. Exactly. And I think that's I think that's absolutely smart. Like we said last time, he needs a hand, but he does need a small council. He needs people to be able to bounce his ideas off. He's got mm-hmm. informally he's got one, but he does need he does need one because of course everybody's gonna say no. They're gonna they're I mean just they're gonna think of all the wrongs that the Lannisters have in, have inflicted upon, you know, the Starks and the Northern Houses, and they're gonna be like, "Why would you go meet with these people?" And rightly so, they have every right to feel to to um, to be in that to feel that way and to take that position mm-hmm. because they nothing good has ever come from uh, a, you know a, a meeting with the Lannisters or the Targaryens, you know. And and who said that was it? I don't remember which one. I can't remember who said it, but basically they're saying that last time that a Stark rode to meet a Targaryen, that it ended badly. And what they're referring to is the fact that Ned Stark's brother, Brandon, and their father um, went to, were summoned by Mad King Eris. Or no, was it, mm-hmm. was it yeah, were summoned by Mad King Eris um, to talk about the fact that their fucking daughter had been kidnapped. And what fucking happened? Fucking. Well, no, uh, Brandon went down there. Brandon. Brandon to, went to threaten to fight Rhaegar. Rhaegar, and then and Rickard was summoned. The father was summoned. Okay, that's what it was. The father was summoned, and what ended up happening was they both got murdered. That they both got murdered. Fucking Rickard, the father was burnt by wildfire while his son was chained up and watched and had to watch. And he was like, some was it like some torture device that every time he like they put a moved. they put a sword they put a sword within reach, barely yes. out of reach, and yeah. he had a torture yeah. device around his neck. So the more he struggled to reach the sword, the tighter it would get. So and he it strang- took him. Right. He, strangled, he was strangled to death while watching, while watching his, his father, father being cooked alive in his own armor. Yes. So that's what happened the last time. A Stark was summoned by a Targaryen to the south. Yeah, shit got fucking real. <laughs> and so it's every and everybody knows this. You know, everybody knows this. So it would be like we can see why everybody it, that's present at this meeting is going to be, you know, resisting um, and against opposed to John going down there, and but he's right, you know, a king can't like I was thinking he sent somebody else. Sansa's not queen of the North, but he could send her or send she somebody as an emissary, um, right? I don't know how they co-queen when you've got a brother. I mean Targaryens, I guess, but um, you have he has to be, he has to he has to go himself, and it's true. Um, but I think that instead of it being a fucking surprise that he's going to leave the North in her quote unquote capable hands, that this should have been something that they discussed before they fucking met in front of everybody. Cause this whole time, if he's like, why is it only now that he's, you know, trusting Sansa to have a ruling position when they, this is the, they should have talked about this. Yeah. They should have yeah. talked about this. They should have been like, you know what, Sansa, I trust your judgment or whatever. And I want you to have a piece in this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this, first of all, and I don't want to do this by myself. And you've got valuable knowledge and skills to help, and I think that you should 
be my hand or you should be the second in command or my co-pilot, whatever the fuck you want to Right, does he even have a hand? Do they do that in the North? He doesn't have one, and I guess they don't, but... Because Ned didn't have one. Well, Ned was Ned, a king. Ned wasn't a king. Um, so I don't know if they do that in the North. It'd be... I, but it, I mean, you got to take a look at some of these institutions that are in place and recognize you know, the value. They probably didn't because the whole hand of the king came about with Egon, the conqueror. Mm-hmm. So the North wouldn't have had a hand. So they that makes he, sense. Yeah. That wouldn't be like part of their culture. I wrote down, is Baelish nervous? And I don't remember why. Um, I don't know if he's nervous. I like, I was watching him very carefully and I think that, I think he's as surprised as anybody to hear about Daenerys and her three dragons and Dothraki Horde. Because he has been unplugged too, you know what I mean? Just just as surprised, do you, oh, do you notice that moment um, where, when Melisandre is talking and they're talking about Jon Snow as King of the North and they take that they take that, that side shot and you see um, Tyrion turn around and look at Varys like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. What do you mean he let the he let them? Um, I mean, they have the no idea what's they happening have no idea there. what's going on. So it's like not we've been keep we keep saying that Cersei is blind to what's happening, but the reality is that nobody knows what's happening. Everyone's right been ignoring now. the North. Everybody's been ignoring everybody's been ignoring the North, so nobody knows what's happening up there. And now suddenly you've got this woman and she's got dragons and she wants to meet, but she's got a Lannister on her side. And as far as you know, the Lannister are all bad, but it's Tyrion who. I mean, most people, if they ever had an encounter, they just, you know, he's the imp. Why would you trust the imp? And just, like, you know, just as far as, like, lore and superstition goes, imps or ambassadors are not to be trusted. You know, dwarves ambassadors are not to be twisted. are not, I was going to say twisted. Are not to be twisted. <laughs> well, they, and, they, they never said that dwarves couldn't be trusted. He just said dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes. People just don't yeah. care about them and they disrespect them. But they, yeah. but, you know, bastards aren't supposed to be trusted. Bastards, but- Dornishmen, and eunuchs. Yeah. They're all poisoners. Yep. yep. Boom, we've got them yeah, all. I can't remember why I wrote, is Baelish nervous? I feel like I'm going to yeah, remember think, later think, and be annoyed. I think he just, I think he's looking around and he's like, oh, shit. You know, he's like, I said, he's finding out this inf- this new information for the first time that there, the, there's a queen, she's got dragons, she's got, ar- she's got an army, she's got a fleet. And, Maybe uh, that's what I wrote. Maybe I was wondering if he was nervous about there being dragons. Because, okay, I know what it was. It was mm-hmm. the, He made a face when they mentioned Daenerys Targaryen landing in Dragonstone with her dragons. That's what I meant. Was he nervous about that? He's like, oh, wait a second. Because he's smart enough to be like, oh, Aegon flashback. <laughs> Not even just that. Once again, is he on the winning side? Yep. He thought he was. And that's, that's why we said, we said last time that we're not going to see him stick around. Uh, and well, now that John is leaving and Sansa's got, you know, control. He's going to try door, to get his claws in Sansa again. He's going to she's going to try and he's got to. Like, the, and the fact that John like, choked him out down in the crypt is nothing totally more but motivation. Oh, yeah, he totally did. Absolutely. Like, how dare you tell him that you love your my sister? Like, you don't love my sister. You sold her. You basically gave her away to the cruelest person that ever lived. Out, you know, outside of fucking like Eris Targaryen, and he brutalized her. How he's like, also the reason Ned Stark got killed. He's the reason, and we don't know that yet. But you know, he is the reason Ned Stark got killed. And um, well, I know. I yeah, mean, he knows he knows that Baelish didn't try to save him. At least, yeah, yeah. He does. You do know that. There's a lot of stuff. Like I'm, I'm wondering with all this stuff. Like there's just so many things that are coming out. Like we were like we were talking about last time. Isn't it come out that Joffrey, um, that um that Peter Baelish and Elena had their hands in Joffrey's death. Is there going to come out now that, you know, like, does it have to, like, the only thing that he could use against Sansa is maybe he could say that she murdered Liza Aaron or something, you know, because they have those secrets between them too, which nobody's Mm -hmm. talking about. And I think those things have to come, they have to come back up again. Um, Everybody's secrets have got to come, have got to come back up and they have to have consequences or something is going to come of them. Um, so he should be nervous, but now that John is leaving, he's probably less nervous than he was at that meeting. Yeah. Well, so John going uh, south to Daenerys, who's demanding that he bend the knee. Mm-hmm. Once he didn't again, mention that, huh? He didn't. Mention no, he that. didn't mention that. Look and... at that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but again, that brings to mind Aegon's conquest. Mm-hmm. Will John be the new king who knelt? I think he's got to be. 
because I don't, I don't think, think he really cares about being king. He just he wants to, to get this battle done. He doesn't. He so would happily, maybe... happily uh, kneel, you know, submit to Daenerys, but would Sansa and the other northerners want it? Which That's makes me wonder, will they turn against Jon? That's what I was, you know, as you were saying that, I was like, well, he, if he comes back as the king who, who knelt and nobody supports that, what happens? Does Sansa become the queen in the north and suddenly we've got a whole different, you know, a whole different thing happening here? Um, I mean, that would obviously drive Cersei crazy and I'd pay just to see that. But uh, <laughs> Well, now we'd have three queens. Now we'd have three queens. Four queens. Well, we could, we'll talk about Yara later. So I was yeah. going to say four queens, but yeah, we'll know about all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was all very. In, it was very interesting, and I think that what something that kind of alludes to something like that going down is the fact that who I can't remember that guy, the one who stood up and said, "Listen, I agree with Sansa. Like, no, why would you do that?" And it's the first, like everybody speaking out, and even Lady Mormont's like, "Your Grace, we need you fucking here." Don't leave. Don't leave. And they have every right to be afraid of their king leaving and not coming back because mm -hmm. it keeps happening. <laughs> right. It keeps happening. I mean, the Starks aren't getting any fucking smarter, you know, as we can see, as we see, you know, even as far as Bravos that the, they're portrayed as the dum-dums of the mm -hmm. seven kingdoms, you know, they're like the yokels. They're the country folk who <laughs> nobody, they know they're not, intelligence is not the thing that they're known for. So yeah, that was it was interesting. Well, Baelish looked ha Baelish looked really happy that um, Sansa was, is going to be holding the North. So did Brienne. She smiled. She gave a little subtle smile, looked down, and she was like, "Oh shit, girl power." Yes. I think that something that could happen is Baelish trying to get the North to turn against Jon, so that Sansa could be queen of the North, and mm -hmm. trying to get inside her head to make yeah, her yeah totally. To make her Somebody. believe that she deserves it and not John. And what if it comes out that John's a Targaryen? We haven't yeah. addressed. I mean, it's only been two episodes, but we haven't addressed that yet. Nope, we haven't. And you know, I think everybody, like all speculation and theory stuff, was pointed to Baelish telling him in that scene with the Crips, and nobody anticipated it'd be something as simple as like, oh, "I love your sister." Well, I don't uh, think I don't think Baelish knows he's a Targaryen. I don't think so. That's what I'm saying. I don't think so either. Everybody thought that he. That, it would, that he would be the one to tell him, oh, but it's I not going to be him. It's not going to be him. I don't know how, I mean, it's got to be Bran, right? Like, how else do you, uh, he, yeah, Bran is the only one who knows. Yeah. Bran is the only one who knows. Um, yeah, it's, I think things are getting really messy in the North, and that they will continue to get messy, and I'm looking forward to it. Especially because Peter Baelish is there. But yeah, because he's still there, and he's got to be there, because he's got the Knights of the Vale, and they need that army. I mean, that's another army that's, you know, used to fighting in the cold, in the snow. Can Sansa hold, can Sansa lead? Nope. I don't, I want to say my, okay, that was my gut reaction. My gut reaction is no. Um, I would like to see her do a good job, but I just think that she is not capable yet of taking the advice of other people because she doesn't trust anybody. And that's going to be the reason that she fucks up. She's going to make some, I think, and she was not, you know, like she knows what she knows, but she's not, she doesn't have the, the practical experience that comes with actually ruling. She's seen like what the top of the top does, not seeing what, you know what I mean? Like she's seen Cersei do what she does, but she was never privy to any of the small council meetings. So she doesn't necessarily know all the things that go into it. Um, and I think, I think go that ahead. she wants to do a good, I think that she'd want to do a good job but I also think that this is the first time that we've ever seen her with any real power. So um, if you have real power and you can't trust anybody and the only person around you is going to give you, you have Brienne and you have Peter Baelish and those are not exactly the best advisors. I mean, Brienne, okay, but she's so honor bound. Like she can't see past Brienne, that. Yeah, Brienne's not an advisor. And then um, you've got Baelish. Baelish and, just wants what he wants for himself. Mm -hmm. And right now he wants Sansa and to be in a, place of leadership mm -hmm. um, and John I mean John and Sansa need each other John John does have a way of commanding loyalty mm -hmm. but I don't think he knows how to really get this shit across 
Why hasn't he told the North that he was brought back from the dead? That's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I meant. To, that's what I was thinking about earlier. He's like, why hasn't he said that? Why didn't he say, he's like, listen, I know what I did at the wall, and they murdered me for it, and then they brought me back to life. Like, why are you hiding that? Why are you hiding that? Like, I mean, are you afraid people will be afraid of you? Sure, I might be afraid of you, but maybe they need a little bit of fear, too. Maybe they need to fear you just a little he bit. He doesn't want to be feared. He wants to be loved. He wants to be, you know, honorable. That's cool, but they still, I mean, if you're going to be honorable and be, then be honest, be like, I was dead and I came back. And if, and he needs Santa. Santa has like the intrigue part down, because mm-hmm. she's still keeping secrets from John. Yes, she is. So she has like the in- intrigue part down. She knows how King's Landing works. She knows how Westerosi politics work. Mm-hmm. John is good at commanding loyalty, and he knows what's going on in the North, and he's singularly focused on that. Yeah. I don't think either one of them could lead without the other. But I don't think that they're necessarily good together either because yeah. they can't seem to, you know, work things out on their own. But again, yeah. maybe they need to have a small council and have a they small do. council meeting before presenting everything to the lords. I think what John is doing is trying to hold the North as king, but as a democracy. Yeah, exactly. That is what he's trying to do. He's trying to make sure everybody he's he's giving everybody he's trying to not put anybody in the dark. He's trying to make it so that he's super transparent and people are able to see what's going on to understand his decision process so they know where he's coming from. But he's still not giving them all the information to be able to do that. It's the same mistake that he made at um, at the wall, you know, like not telling them, not going into detail about this army of the dead and letting other people speak and say, this is what we saw. Um, You know, he's like got all the theories, but not none of the evidence to back him up. And people don't I mean. I like I'm, it makes me wonder like how much do the northerners believe and like they they know the wildlings have crossed yeah so they're totally worried about that but how much do they believe in the army of the dead I think they believe in it I mean at this point the wildlings are there and went at Winterfell and they yeah. they've accepted it Yeah Actually you know what that just made me think of because you know they've had the long night and it was a long long time ago Mm-hmm. Why don't they have anything in their books from their maesters in the North about Dragonglass? Why are they just finding out about this? You would think if anyone knew, it would be the Northerners. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a great it question. Was, it was in the books at the Night's Watch, I believe. So why don't why don't why doesn't the North know this? Yeah, as you, you're right. You'd think it would be something that would be just as common, or you know, told in the like you know. The, the nans of the north would be telling their oh, dragon glass can defeat you know like why isn't that part of the tale you know like what isn't that part of the lore like garlic for vampires and silver bullets for werewolves you know like why is right, it there right. like why you're right it's 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 actually that's actually um a great question and why why would that knowledge be lost no matter how long ago it was you think that that would somehow make it through there's a way to beat them you know Unless it just got so ridiculous to people as they became safer and what summers got longer that they just stopped believing, which, you know, people have short memories, so it's not not surprising. Uh, I don't know why, but it sh- I think you're right. It should be part of the lore. It should have been passed down. <sighs> Man, we're going to see John at Dragonstone next episode, I guess. Yeah. And um, I, I'm looking forward to that meeting. And I want him to, like, he's got to finally be like, I was brought back. I don't I don't know why he hasn't told anybody he came back from the fucking dead. He should have. I mean, I feel I mean, like John's, he's just going to make the same mistakes he made at the wall. Well, he's already making them. <laughs> it's the same shit that got him murdered. He didn't learn from it at all. Yeah. Does he get to get brought back? He, he told Melisandre that if he dies, not to bring him back. But uh, she said right. herself, if the Lord wills it, she's going to do it. Yeah, so maybe it's something, but it wouldn't it be and, interesting if it wasn't Melisandre who brought him back, but it was Thoros of Mir. How much of himself is he going to keep losing, though? I mean, remember before we thought that yeah. we thought he would come back as like just different. Mm-hmm. I thought he would at least be somewhat vengeful. Something other than it his didn't hairstyle. seem like he was. I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> right instead of having a ponytail. I feel like all that happened was he became more brooding and sullen. Yeah. 
And for like, and like, with what reason? Like, other, it's not like he's well, really. He got murdered. I mean, yeah, no, 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 I know, but like, it's not like he he died and he saw something on the other side that made him reconsider things, you know? Because he said that he saw nothing, that there was nothing there. Um, but to come back and just be like, oh, okay, well, these are be brooding and then not make any different make any different moves, right? Right. Like he thinks that he's being doing differently by being more transparent and communicating, but like all of these scenes could have just as easily have happened at the wall last season. You know what I mean? Um, or the season before. So I don't know, John. Do you think he'll get killed again and brought back? Um, I think that. I would I I wouldn't be mad at it actually. Um I think that he will be I don't know that he'll be killed again. I don't. Um I think that he could be injured really badly. I think if he does get killed again that it won't be Melisandra, it'll be Beric Dondarrion and Thoros of Mir. And uh, Ooh, like what happened with Catelyn in the books when she yeah, became I, I think Lady that Stoneheart. That's... I think that that's what happens, and that if if we see it, that it's going to be those two who do it, and then Beric Dondarrion is no more after that. Right, so what happened with Catelyn, a.k.a. Lady Stoneheart, was that she was too she was dead for too long. Thoros didn't want to bring her back, and Beric Dondarrion basically gave her his life and, you know, ended his own. He gave her the, what did they call it? The kiss of something. Mm-hmm. I'll look it um, up. Essentially, what Thoros did to bring Dondarrion back, Beric gave up his last life, I guess, <laughs> as if this was like a game. He gave his last life to Catelyn. So, yeah, maybe maybe Beric Dondarrion makes it up there instead of. Because Melisandre won't be there to bring John back if he gets killed again. Mm-hmm. So maybe no, John gets killed. Be. Maybe get John gets killed and Beric Dondarrion is the one who gives his life to bring him back. Because we've been asking, what is Beric Dondarrion's purpose? We've been exactly. asking that for a long time. Why does the Lord of Light keep bringing him back? The last kiss of the Lord of Light. Last kiss of the Lord of Light. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been asking for a while, what is Beric Dondarrion's purpose? Maybe that's his purpose. Mm-hmm. Is to give his last life to bring John back. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's that. Or maybe to rally the Stormlands, but everybody thinks he's dead and been killed so many times. And like you said, he doesn't remember who he was anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, I can't think of another purpose for him. Hmm. Hmm. That's something to put a pin in. So then, do we? I mean, do we see Arya that because Arya is going back north? I want to eat. Do we see the Beric Dondarrion and um, them meeting up with Arya because she's headed home now? With the scene that made you, like, I don't know, like, I don't, it's funny, because I don't know, like, throughout this episode, I wanted to text you so many times, but I was like, ah, I don't know, like, when, like, did you start at 9, or did you start at 9.01? Like, you're watching on TV. Oh, I start I, right on time. You know, because it's, it's coming on TV, <laughs> but I'm watching on, like, HBO now. Shout outs, give us stuff. And, um, like, I'm like, shit, when did I start? Did I start at, like, 9.01 or 9.02? So I don't know, like, when we're seeing things, so I didn't want to text you. But, like, I started freaking out. And I started getting texts from you. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> we should take a screenshot of our text messages. and just put <laughs> Because it's absolute fucking gibberish. And it happened for me at the time when Arya is by herself in the woods. Nightmare! I was afraid, <laughs> I was afraid that you, this, my first thought was like, oh, my God, she's trying to light the fire. She's cold. It's not getting big enough. Fuck the others. Then I was like, but wait, the others haven't made it past the walls yet, so that's not possible. And I was like, but maybe they have and we don't know. And this is where we find out that, fuck, they're already here. And I was like, I was so nervous. I was so nervous. And then there's the wolf. And then there's another wolf. And then there's, and I started losing my mind. And then I get these texts from Tanya, like, ah, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, it was just, I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Amazing. Nightmare. I, um, I knew right away it was wolves. Once I saw her horse getting skittish, I was like, oh my god, wolves. Oh my god, they're going to bring Nymeria back. Because I think last week we said that they just hadn't mentioned anything about wolves. Yeah, they had Nymeria. it. Yeah, so we, I was like, I don't know if they're going to... Yeah, I was like, I don't know if they're going to do anything with it because it just hasn't even been mentioned. I knew it was wolves right away. Oh, man. The moment her horse started getting skittish, I was like, oh my god, wolves. Uh, Nymeria so is back. Big as shit. 
big as yeah. I'm what like, yo, saying? they got her standing on the ledge Lion King style, but she's still really huge. She's huge. Holy fuck. It was um, amazing. And just to like know that she's not gonna eat her face and like the close up of the on on Nymeria's eyes and as um thought, thought, what you call it, Arya is talking to her and you just see like this wolf understands and they're communicating with each other. I just looked at my notes and all as far as Nymeria, all my notes say is Nymeria. <laughs> I mean that's that's enough. I mean what do you what else is there to say? Like holy shit, they brought that storyline back in, which gives me hope for so many other ones and I'm just like, ah, uh, yes. And people so, who are upset that Nymeria didn't join forces with Arya, of course she didn't. She's They're been living her person. own life for years now. For years. She's had her own pack. She's like she's got a crew. She made her own crew. And like, you know, her last memory of this this person who suddenly she's encountering is her throwing rocks at her, telling her to get the fuck lost. But I, I don't even I don't if think it was for her own good. Even right, if it's I don't, for her I don't own good, I think that nightmare is has like hard feelings towards Arya. I, don't I think, think Nightmare so is just different now. And I was watching um one of those like inside Game of Thrones things. Mm-hmm. And they were saying Nymeria is like Arya. Exactly. Arya is not built for noble life. And Nymeria... She's not domesticated, right? She can't right, just walk, follow you around. And, and neither is Nymeria. Yep. Nymeria is Nymeria. not built to go just live at a castle and be Arya's homie. She has her be own... Her dog. Pack. She's, she's right. not a... Nymeria is not a pet. Neither is Arya. But Nymeria is back for a reason. Will she yes. save Arya's life? I think that she's got to be... I mean, I don't think we'll see Nymeria die honestly. Um, but I think that she will keep her safe. I think that, um, I think that we'll, I mean, we, even if she we don't keep her safe, but now that, now that Nymeria has been introduced, we can suddenly get the stories about this rogue wolf, dire wolf, mm-hmm. and these wolves that are, are not afraid of fucking people, you know, cause that's the biggest thing in, in the books about them is that there's this pack of wolves and they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. They're not afraid of people. You can't fight them the normal way because they're smart and uh, they 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 like have battle strategies and shit. And you're just nobody is safe, and they're ravaging the, the riverlands. So um, winter is here, and best place for them to be would be north. But I I think that we'll get we're gonna get to see some of those those storylines um, maybe bring brought back in. And I think that I don't think that they'll follow her so she knows but maybe we get to see maybe she's gonna have some wolf dreams that would be great maybe we get her wolf dreams because you get to like here you get to see this that you know it's just like with um with john that the warging isn't like super obvious but you get hints and it's of not it just in the way they're able to communicate yeah and you're like oh wait a second if you what? don't know aria's wolf dreams are basically she thinks she's dreaming about being Nymeria, but she's actually warging at night into Nymeria. And she yep. just doesn't know it. Yep. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe their connection will be back. Yeah, that would be great. I would love to see it. Maybe, we, and, you know, everybody thinks that you, maybe you just get a wolf dream, uh, say, at the beginning of next episode. Please. And it's just like, you think it's, you think it's Bran, but it's fucking Arya. Ooh, I like that. That would be amazing. But we haven't seen Bran yet, so we definitely got to see him next episode. Yeah. Gosh, there's <sighs> so much to cover. Yeah. Like, there's so much left. Dude, there's so much left. And, okay, all right. Is there anything else on Nymeria and, and Arya? Because I You want to talk about the Ironborn battle? I want to get into the best fucking pirate battle I've ever seen. Let's ever. Go. Like, you think about all the ones that you've ever seen. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, oh, all these, like, fantasy pirate battles. It's just, like, this one is the first time that I ever was, like, holy shit, there's nothing, nothing glorious or romantic about being in a battle on a pirate ship because these motherfuckers just keep coming over and there are people everywhere and they're so, you get so squished in together and crowded together that you don't know if you're fighting somebody on your side or the other side and like axes are swinging swords are like and it's bloody and people are getting stepped on and smashed like holy fuck there's fire <laughs> like it was just i was just like yo euron had the greatest the entrance ever. of the... all time yo dude He's a psycho a fucking psycho and i like him all the more for it because holy shit i mean okay so let's back up before all the blood and guts are happening we're having like a potential 
brother, sister, Alaria stands threesome. I mean, obviously, Theon's yeah. not down, but like there was all that, and it's just like you know, you see these two, you know, you see these two rulers on the boat, and they're in, uh, suddenly discover that they we could we could do this. <laughs> Shit could go down. And you're like, oh, well, that's interesting. We've already had a sex scene this episode. I don't really know that we're going <laughs> to up down. Has Let's that ever stopped them? This. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, they're just they're just chit-chatting. And then suddenly, poof, Theon, obviously Theon's all uncomfortable. You're just like, okay, Theon, whatever. Like, say something. Don't just storm away like a pouty little bitch. Be like, come on, guys. I'm right here. He's still so traumatized, though. He's just fucking, as we as we see <laughs> yeah um i don't know why they didn't think about the fact that they'd be so easy to okay. find all right that's what i wanted to say i'm glad that she said that because hello we know we know that you guys left the iron islands with a bunch of ships right we know that um euron's we didn't know that he was going to... He said in, at the King's Moot that he was going to build the biggest fleet ever seen. We know that. We know that he's after power and that he wanted to be, basically go bring and offer his fleet to Daenerys. But he also knows that they betrayed him and that by now they should probably know. This is where I'm talking about everybody's being kept in the dark, right? Every Nobody really knows what's happening anywhere else. Because we, like, in my mind, after seeing, like, after watching the battle, I'm just like... Like, this episode had me walking around talking to myself when it was done. I was just, like, walking around. I was like, I can't believe it. Just, just, like, just, like, mumbling. And, like, Jamie and Sri like, yo, are you saying to... And I was like, oh, no, 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 sorry. I'm talking to myself. Because... <laughs> and they're just looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm, like, walking around the apartment like, Dude, I can't believe... And I was, I, was, I was being insane. But um, I'm just, like... So you know that because you're with Danny, you would leave your on no option or for allies, other than to go to Cersei. And King's Landing is not far from Dragonstone, and if you're no, deploying right your army, there. it's right fucking there. Like, guys, look at a fucking map. Look at the fucking map. King's Landing, Dragonstone, like, you would have to... I don't know why nobody anticipated running into Euron. I think that was the biggest fucking stupid move that, that they could have and made. The, and the thing is, too, not even just running into him, but, but everyone, everyone knew that's where Daenerys would land, because it made the most sense. Right. So why Everybody they knew embracing that. themselves for Euron to show up or for someone to show up with ships at Dragonstone. Or someone. And not in like, and let's talk, like, come on, look at the fucking ships they built. Like, this is, we have never seen anything like How this. How the hell this. do they build all those ships so fast on an island with no goddamn trees? I don't know, drug. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what they, how they, how they made that happen. Um, but they made it happen. And these are like big, like, this is not like the Iron Fleet that they, they ran away with. These are fucking like battleships for the first time that you're like, oh my, I can't, like, I can't get over them. That's just like, just how big they were. Like, you know, like, there's that moment it's coming through, you look up and you see this huge sail, and you're like, but they're already on a pretty big boat. But you see this huge sail, and there's like the thunder and the lightning lights up the, like, the squid, and you're just like, oh, oh I want to uh, watch it again. Uh, I want to watch it again right now. I can't, like, it was so fucking. Crazy, so crazy. Am I frozen? Yes. Okay. Because I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at my screen. And I'm just like, oh, but you can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. I just can't see okay. you anymore. Okay. Because it was super animated. I was like, why is my picture just sitting still? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, um, yeah, dude, they should have anticipated it. Some like have. in some way, shape, or form. Like that was so stupid. Like where during that meeting, I was like, as after watching it and going back to that meeting, like how come nobody's considering you're on a threat? You know, like why, when they're talking about their plans to do this and to move these guys here and for you to sail, you know, escort, um, Ilaria back to Dorne with the ship. Why is nobody saying, but wait, my uncle, he is probably joined forces with Cersei. By now. I mean, even if, even if they didn't think he joined forces with Cersei, they know he's Just looking to, for them. No, exactly. And, and like, you're a fleet. You can't hide. <laughs> Exactly, dude. Like, and why weren't there scouts? Why didn't they? Maybe they did. I mean, anybody that they would have sent out obviously would have been captured. So scouts would not have fucking helped them there. But what but, about little birds? Oh man, what a fucking blunder! It was the single biggest catastrophe. And <laughs> like, and that's why I was what? saying when they were doing their plans, I was like, this is this is all this all sounds great. It sounds like a perfect plan. So who's gonna fuck it up? Yep. 
And he first, you already see, first, Tyrion's first big move fail epically. Epic. I mean, I think that they should have secured Dragonstone. Yes, it's a fortress, but you have ships to worry about. Yeah. And, okay, maybe you don't know who... I mean, you know, you assume Cersei has no fleet because, yeah, you know, she doesn't have anyone supporting her with ships. But you should, you secure yourself anyway. And they didn't do that. They left nope. themselves wide open. They left themselves because wide Euron, Euron open. Because Euron could have just as easily shown up on Dragonstone with his... He could have... Exactly, dragon. dude. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, why? Why? He could have shown... He, it's, Dragonstone is not that far. And I think that all this battle talk about who they should attack first, like, until you've got your home base secure, I think that you're right. Even if you don't plan on staying there. Like, right. come on. Let, let, let Euron come to you. I, I just... And take I mean, Euron I mean, seriously as a threat. Take him serious. Exactly. He, nobody was taking him seriously. And, I mean, he's obviously a fucking force to be reckoned with. When he said he was the best captain of the 14 seas, he wasn't fucking joking. And right. you see that from this battle. And you see and you, yeah, that moment when Yara looks around and she's like, there is no getting out of this. All is fucking lost. My entire fleet is burning. And people are just screaming and dying. Like, it's, I love that moment. Like, she's like... Oh my god, looking around and then she goes right back and she like kills somebody. Like the time slowed down for just enough time for her to be like, Holy shit, this is not Right, might as well go out but, swinging. Yeah, and then she kills the guy and the, and the battle continues at full speed. But no, they should have been prepared. It's so stupid. They should have thought about it. Cause what happens now? This fleet has won. So does he go back to King's Landing with I think his he's... alleged hostages? Or yes, does he go I think back... that Ilaria is the gift to Cersei that he was talking about. Yep. He's got and he's got her. He's got her. He's, he's can we talk about how these sand snakes can't fight for shit? No, we can talk about them. Bitch, fucking... you're on a sea battle and you come upstairs with a whip. A whip. Jerry, just... Nikki. They would. I, I got. I'm fucking stuttering. I'm so upset. I got no words. A whip. I guess people, people have who are wearing armor. They have swords. They're wearing armor. They have spiked knuckles. You saw the guy with the spiked knuckles punching that guy yes. in the face. Yes, and oh you come God, upstairs yeah. with a whip? You guys didn't yeah. learn any other... Uh... That's what I'm saying. How are you going to be the sand... Like, I, I think that the, the arrogance of Dorne, um, which I think effectively and appropriately now has basically wiped them out of this story, like, you know, last the beginning of last season. Um, well, I wouldn't say wow. the arrogance of Dorne. Specifically, specifically the okay, and the sand snakes. And the sand snakes. Their arrogance that, like, come on, you have all these opportunities to learn about other types of warfare, you know what I mean? Like, other types of fighting. Why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? And then to come up on a sea battle with just, like, all these crazy men just fucking reaving and raving, just, like, just go in. They're down for the fucking fight. Like, the iron, like you get to see their ironborn in their full glory here as led by Euron, and it's fucking terrifying. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying. So, no, coming up with a whip and a couple of little daggers is not going to do it against men who are fucking wearing armor. Duh. Well, the Ironborn don't wear full armor. Fair enough. They're, but they're wearing, you know, like their leather shit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean... I mean, granted, they weren't prepared for the attack. They caught them completely off guard and by surprise. Okay. Yeah. I'll give them that. But, come but if on, you're going to jump in... They should have just stayed downstairs and protected Alaria if that's the case. You're not going to mm -hmm. jump up on the ship with your whip and just start just choking people? Like, <laughs> so you don't even have a shield. So stupid. It was very stupid, but I was happy to see them die because I hate them. I honestly was too. I was like, uh, and like your <laughs> neurons, like how like spear spearing or a bar, and just like she's like falling. I'm just like and basically impaling her. I was like, holy shit, this oh, is. Oh, he killed the shit out, out of Obara, and I was like, well, that's a wrap. Mm hmm. And I was happy. I'm honestly happy to see her go. I can't stand that bitch. I didn't like any of them. Tyene got choked to death with her own whip like a dummy. Mm hmm. And so, I mean, so obviously they're taking Ilaria captive. Oh, and Tyene. And Tyene. Mommy, mommy, mommy. She gets mama, to be with her mom. Mama, mama. You know? So they get to be together. And then we got the moment of ultimate fucking betrayal. Again. Right after they're downstairs drinking wine and flirting. And Yara's like, yeah, Theon's going to be my protector. <laughs> Bitch, protect you from what? From what? Protect? Oh God, no, 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 man. 
Theon. Theon Greyjoy. Once again. I mean, I I I have mixed feelings about it, honestly. Because there's that moment he calls him out. And he's like, um, you know, after they, they get... I mean, Yara got some licks in. I'll, I'll give her that. Um, but then Yara calls him. I was like, yo, Theon, I got your fucking sister. What you gonna do? And Theon's just like... And, like, I was like, for a moment, I was like, man, come on, Theon. Theon, like, I know you're in a tough position. Because if he rushes Euron, Euron could just slice her head off with that Moana fish hook. If he doesn't <laughs> do it, then, you know, he's going to, he's obviously, but, like, no matter what, he's in a fuck situation. Like, does he rush and then be, and, and then have to deal with the fact for the rest of his life that because he ran to try to protect the sister that she killed, that he was killed? Or does he literally jump ship? And be like, well, maybe he'll keep her alive because I'm not, you know, it's just a shitty, shitty, shitty choice. I and ass- I did. I have... assumed he was gonna kill Yara no matter what. Yeah, so did I. So I was like, well, Theon, you should have made a fucking move. Uh, but then I also thought, look at Theon. He's not an he's not an Iron Ironlander, you know. Like he proved himself in a couple of minor battles on a boat. But mm-hmm. Theon is an archer. If he had had an archer, if he had had a bow and arrow, he would have killed Yara. It would have been over. He should have had a bow and arrow. That's what I thought when I watched it the second time. I was like, damn, Theon was such a good marksman. If he had had an arrow, he could have just picked that bad boy up and shot it through He's your missing outside. fingers, too. Oh, Remember? that's right. Hmm. Practice, Theon, practice. <laughs> <laughs> but this motherfucker jumped shift and left his sister and just like that moment of like disappointment and anger I and felt hurt really bad for and her. everything in Yara's eyes. And at simultaneously, he's happening right next to her is the shock and glee happening on Euron's face. And you're just like, wow, there's a lot of expressions happening right now. There was a lot going on, though. And Theon clearly has PTSD. Yeah, clearly. It hasn't been that long since he got away from Ramsay. No, it hasn't been. That's true. And, you know, they sh- he was looking around. He was seeing teeth being pulled out. Yeah, exactly. Being cut off. And these are things that happened to him. Yep. Um, exactly. I think that being in, because it wasn't just a regular battle, I think, you know, seeing people become, you know, being dismembered and disfigured yeah. really triggered him. I think so too. It, it, it's a tough call. I want to call him a bitch, but like, like you said, he's, he's legitimately got PTSD and he's like, these things have, and like, they weren't like when they showed those scenes, which I'm like, yo, they're good. The iron, iron born are going in. They're mutilating these people. And he just came from that. Right, um, so, and yeah. it just wasn't that long ago, and we've seen already that he's not past that yet. Yeah. You know, so there's no reason to believe he was past it. There was no reason to believe he would suddenly become brave and heroic, because, I mean, is that realistic? Yeah, no. Not with the, uh, not after what he's been through. So, I mean, I guess I'll give him a pass for jumping ship. But, I mean, and I think he's got that moment of remorse at the end where he's kind of treading water and just, like, looking at the, the fucking devastation <laughs> That you're on his, his do you think he'll have them. do you think he'll have some type of redemption arc? Um, I think now he's got to. I just don't know where he goes now. Does he end up on Dragonstone? Does he wash up ashore? You know, um, and if he does, pff, what happens? I to think him? more. I think more than anything, he just did not want to be captured. No, I think he would have chosen to be killed over captured because he's he's traumatized. He doesn't want to go through um what he went through with. With Ramsey again. Nobody would. Nobody would. And again, and he's just... not that far removed from it. This just mm-hmm. happened. Yep. It's true. It's true. Like, for us, it feels like a long time, but storyline-wise, it's just, like, yeah. There's no... I mean, any... Imagine going through that. How many fucking years of therapy do you He was being tortured to for years. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Theon Greyjoy. Tread water. That's fine. We'll see where he ends up. So, I mean, so so that leaves us with a question. Like, at the end, you see, while he's floating there, you see Obara, and you see, um, what's the other one's name? Nymeria. Nymeria, you know, being like, you know, some gruesome figureheads of this boat, Mm -hmm. war trophies, and you don't see anybody else. So, I'm, Yara, I guess, is still alive, and Ilaria obviously has to be still alive. So, I I mean, yeah, I believe they're taking Ilaria to King's Landing. So are you taking you take Yara and Alaria because there's two queens, right? Well, well not, not Alaria, but um, but Yara's you know vying for that position. So you get them, to, you give two really good prisoners of war, and um, I hope that Alaria is tortured worse than that Septa. Yeah, dude, I'm that, as I'm you sorry, say that I'm just, I'm just like I'm like it. the mountain 
is going to get Alaria Sands. Uh, yeah. Alaria yeah. deserves it. She was out of she, bounds. Totally. Totally. She, she didn't totally know. Totally out of bounds. She, she didn't know her place. And she killed Marcella, and Marcella just didn't deserve it. Mm hmm. So, I mean, if this Cersei gets revenge on her for that, then I'm, I'm all about it, Cersei. How about it? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll allow, I'll take Cersei's side on that one. Yep. Marcella didn't deserve to die. <laughs> that was so legal. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So now that so the now- Iron Fleet is destroyed, um, destroyed. Boom. Yeah, well, got Yara's no portion of the Iron ships. Fleet. No fucking ships. Who's going to ferry the Dornish to King's Landing? How are they going to get there now? Are they going to march? That's their only option. But why would they know? Well, to they love the they love the sand snakes. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I guess they they rally behind their dust. But if they rally, I'm just if wondering they how rallied, the structure. I think. Oh, how, they, huh? Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish if they thought. rallied behind Ilaria Ilar- Sand, a bastard, over their liege, mm-hmm. uh, Prince yeah. Jorn Martell, and they rallied behind her and her her bastard daughters. They love them. Yeah. I mean, his own guards watch them murder him. That's true. For them. That is true. So, and, and Dorne, they're vengeful. They want to revenge for Oberyn's death. Yep. So there's no way they're going to just bow out of this. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think that that's a good point. I'm just, I'm wondering now what happens. What happens, right? So this is obviously, this is epic fail. And this is a huge, huge, huge blow to um, their plans, right? And their strategy. So what happens now? When Elena Tyrell hears about what's happened, you know what I mean? Like, how, how does this affect? How does this affect their their allegiance? Because they've got basically the Iron Fleet and Dorn. I think outside of like a vengeful Dorn, um, you know, rallying behind the news of this, which will take a little while for them to hear. Uh, what happens to the strat? Like, what happens to what happens to their plans? Because do you still send the unsullied the unsullied. And the Dothraki away to storm Casterly Rock. Like, has this has that well, plan already been set in motion? Well, because Yara, that Yara dragon so iron... completely unprotected. Right, but Yara, the Dornish army wasn't at Dragonstone. No, no, no. I know that that they they were going to escort Alaria back to Dorne to be able to meet them. But I'm asking, like, what happens now that you know now that this fleet has been your fleet has been destroyed? What happens? How do you find out? Like, do the they Tyrells, send the Tyrells had ships too? Mm-hmm. But the ships were there with them, and like what happened? I just don't know, like just structure wise. Like, do you look at? I think like as as um, one of their banner, like bannermen, you look at um, you look at Daenerys and Tyrion. You go, what the fuck, guys? Who is your on? Why wasn't he accounted for? Why wasn't he brought up? Why can we don't? How can we don't know about him? Um, and this is a huge failure. It's a huge, huge, huge failure. Uh, I just wonder if people start to question, you know, who's if they're fighting on the right on the right side. Because here she is, mother of dragons, breaker of chains, and she loses her entire fleet in one battle. But I don't know if that's her whole fleet because when she was arriving in episode ten from last season, mm-hmm. there were ships, there were ironborn ships, but they also had sails for for. Um, from- Dorn Dornish ships uh, and, and right. the Tyrell. Yep. So the Dorn the Dornish do have ships and the Tyrells have ships as well. So I don't think her whole fleet is lost. Okay. Let's hope not. I don't think I don't think her whole fleet is lost. I think just the ironborn portion of it is lost. Yeah. I can't wait to see them getting the news about this. Oh yeah. Because that's like what do you do then? I think the next next episode is called Queen's Justice. Let me oh. double check. Well, I think that's what it's called. Well, if that's the case, then I think that it's Cersei and Ilaria Sands and them. Because I didn't watch, you know, I don't, you know, I don't watch the previews for the next episode, so I have no right. idea. Um, yeah. Oh my god, this battle was so epic. Let's see. So epic. Yes, it's called the Queen's Justice. Well, that's interesting. Wednesday. It's fucking Wednesday. <laughs> the description. <laughs> Daenerys holds court. Cersei returns a gift. Jamie learns from his mistakes. Mm. That's the description. 
Hmm. So we'll see what that means. We don't have we'll to see. really get into it, but we'll see. What yeah, that no. Yeah. It gave me some ideas, but especially the yeah. Cersei returns a gift. <laughs> it yeah. gave me some ideas, but we can hold off on that. Um, I don't think Dorne is going to take the death of the st- Sand Snakes well. No. And I feel like the Reach shouldn't be taking the death of Marjorie and Loras and Mace well either. Yeah, and I mean, we haven't seen, we haven't been down there, so we haven't really seen what's going on. But you're right. I mean, there are all these other parts that naturally just should be coming into play. And I'm excited to and see And then what you those throw in, are. you know, the woman who has the dragons. I mean, Kyburn's crossbow is definitely going to be dangerous. Yep. They definitely will. And um, they won't be expecting. I, I think it'd be stupid for them not to expect any kind of retaliation or preparation. Because at this point, everybody knows she has dragons. So you have to kind of be like, okay, well, what? There's got to be some kind of dragon defense, and somebody should be looking at that. She needs a fucking maester, too. What the fuck, Daenerys? She, oh, yeah, I don't remember her having one. She, she needs a maester. Um, she needs somebody like Kyburn who's just like, oh. Let's figure out if there's a way to ra- a way around that. Let's figure out if there's a way to make this problem go away. Whatever that entails. Um, she needs somebody like that. I mean, she needs a little bit more deviousness on her side. Mm. I don't know. And maybe if Sansa pisses Peter Baelish off, he just takes his his um, his army to join Daenerys. I don't think they will do it, though. I don't think so, either. Because, I mean, when you really think about it, why should anyone join her? Yeah. The only thing, the only motivations to join her are hatred of Cersei and fear of dragons. Yeah, that's true. She hasn't proven, uh, she hasn't shown herself to be anything other than that at this point over there. Nobody cares. I mean, what do they care about slaves being freed in these noble houses? You know what I mean? They don't give a fuck. Right. If anything, it just stopped. You know, it slowed things coming into their ports, if anything, you know. Lost and if they see her as an outsider, do they want to be ruled by an outsider? Yeah. I think something, um, I guess this is completely off topic, but something that also I'm interested in maybe seeing come out this season is the fact that the Iron Bank <laughs> needs to be dealt with. Oh, shit, Seriously. yeah. The Iron Bank needs to be they dealt with. They have not and been I think- paid back. They have not been paid back. And, I and cash- oh my God. And Bravos was founded by escaped slaves. Mm-hmm. And they tend to, the Iron Bank, they make and break kings all the time. Yep. So if they're so, going to side with anyone, they will side with Daenerys. Yep, they will. They and will fund an army for her. They will. And I think that that's something that Cersei has not, is not counting on. And that those are relationships that, um, that will be interesting to see. I want to see that come up because they, I mean, they may in the show, even in the show, they say that the iron bank must be paid. And now that you don't have the Tyrells on your side to kind of feed you the money. And we know that Casterly Rock, Casterly Rock is not producing money. gold and they're, they're broke. The Lannisters are not fucking rich anymore. They're just, they're broke. There's broke. And there's no one yet. holding Casterly Rock still. There's nobody there. And we know that we're going to see a sack of, of, you know, at least Lannisport and Castorio are coming up. They're planning that. They're going to give that to us. And even in the in the trailers, we've seen like the Unsullied storming through um, Lannister territory. So that's coming. But Cersei, I mean, that's just another thing that she just thinks she she can put off. And um, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, an unexpected enemy. We might not see it this season if uh, if she lasts. It might be something that comes to roost like next season, but. That's something that I'm kind of just like... Or it could even be like a last minute like thing that shows up, you know? Yeah. Where suddenly, you know, like with the with the Battle of the Bastards, how suddenly the, the Vale army was there. It could be something yeah. like that. Yeah. Where Danny is like in a shitty place and gets word from Bravos that the Iron Bank is behind her or something like that. Episode number six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we got a battle in the second episode. Oh, I mean, and it's such a good Gosh, one. And we know it's not the only one, and I feel like then it's uh, not going to be the best one either. There's no, gonna be more. that was such, Ugh. and that was such a great battle. Like the most awesome. accurate representation in my mind of a pirate ship battle. And it, <laughs> like I said, it's no longer romantic. And I, I texted Tanya, I was like, "Tell, tell 
Johnny Depp and Peter Pan to Captain Hook to fall all the way back. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Like, no. No, my friend was like, this is what Peter Pan should have been like. And I was like, yeah, no huh, shit. I wish. Man, it, uh, uh, uh. Hmm. Yeah, man. Um, things are happening in real time. Things are happening in real time. Because otherwise, there's no way that Euron would have been there to cut them off. And like I said, King's Landing, so close to Dragonstone. And like, seriously, guys, go look at a map and see how close it is. And you'll be like, oh, come on, man. You should have seen that coming. But yeah, man, I, I'm i excited. I'm excited. I just, I didn't expect to just like, you know, like the first episode back, you're enthralled because it's the first episode back. And you're excited because finally it's here and winter has come. But, like, for the second episode to be as loaded and just so, I just, ah. Uh, yeah, this whole season is going to be intense, I think. Jam-packed. Like, I don't mind. I'll be. T- I'll talk to myself all week. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, like, I'm, like, just, things just keep, I'm, like, walking down the street. I'm, like, oh, my God, but I can't believe, you know. And I want to watch your wanna... preview for next week. Go for it. Go for it. I'm going to watch it later. I might rewatch this this episode, too. I probably will. (laughs) I I probably will. I'm just like, yo, let's watch this epic pirate battle. Because it's, I mean, Euron's laugh when Theon jumps over, you know, like. Oh, my God. He's (laughs) such a cartoon, and I love it. Oh, man. He. Yeah. I think I think we really need to watch out for Dorne. We know just in Dorne's history. So when, when Aegon conquered Westeros. He didn't conquer Dorne. Dorne yep. fought back. They tried to install lords there. Dorne fought back. It took marriage to bring Dorne to the fold, and it was way, 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 way after Aegon the Conqueror. Mm-hmm. So historically, Dorne is not to fuck with. That's there's true. No, maybe... There's do, you no think central, that huh? do you think that maybe they've been just throwing us off the Dornish scent and just, like, making all their storylines seem super weak and whatever, so they could just get rid of these characters and put somebody else awesome in power? <laughs> no, I don't give them that much credit. <laughs> uh, I don't give them that much so credit. Opti- so optimistic. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I just don't give them that much credit. I think that uh, it didn't get a good reception, so they're like, okay, let's try to redo this. But there's no central leadership Brown. that... We- huh? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> there's no central leadership that we know of in Dorne right now. But we know that the Dornish are fighters and that they're vengeful and yep. that they're proud. So I think Dorn is something to watch out for. I hope. I hope I they hope. follow, you know, Dorn. I hope. Like, people are saying that they're just, like, thankful that the storyline is finally then, like, you know, eliminated because it was horrible. I don't think it's eliminated. I think but... that the Sand Snakes are gone, but I don't think the Dorn storyline is eliminated. I'm, what oh. I do hope for is for them to sort of pick back up, pick, uh, pick up the spirit of Dorn that we have in the books. Yeah. That would be Dorn amazing. is badass. Dorn is badass. They fuck shit up. And so yeah. I want to. I want to see that. Um, they haven't told us about any other families or anything in Dorn, so I have no idea who would pick up the mantle. But me neither. Fuck. You know, someone has to. I just. I'll be really disappointed if there's no uh, reaction from Dorn. If there isn't like a very harsh reaction from Dorn. Yeah. I'd be really, really disappointed. They've got to do. They've got to do something. And they can't just, like, they can't let them go out like that. Because, like we said, Alaria is still alive. Yeah, fuck her, though. And maybe the, queen, her. maybe the queen returns a gift. Maybe she sends her head back to Dorne. And that's, that's, and what, that's what sets them off. I yeah. can see that. I would like that, actually. I don't know who she's sending it to, but I guess we'll find out. I also expect <laughs> to see some conflict in the Reach. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, there, there's got to be. Because how, you know, how gonna willing... Be torn between, how... Torn between uh, honoring their, their oaths to their liege lord and, you know, honoring being the queen. honoring the queen. So, yeah, there's definitely a potential conflict there. So, the, you know, it's a decision to join Olena in open rebellion? Yep. Or... And we just, and we just had that. <laughs> you know what I mean? We just saw the young wolf go through right, all this. Right, we saw how that turned out. Oh man, and when um when what's Tarly's name? Randall. When Randall was talking to Jamie and he was like, We don't we don't poison whatever at feast, we don't poison our enemies at feast or some shit like that. Yeah. 
because you yeah. know they are are no, they are an honorable house. Yeah, he said exactly. He said and the Charlie name still a, means something, right? Despite him being a dick to Sam, he's still like this great uh, war general and leader. And mm-hmm. um, I don't think it'll be as simple as just offering him. What is no. the warden of the South? Yep, the South, the warden of the South. And I think that that actually, as you bring that up, that the fact that they said that. Right, like you, all you know, all you really know about Randall Tarley up until this point in the show is that he's Sam's dad and he hates wildlings and he's kind of a dick. Uh, but now you know, like just like in that in like two sentences, you find out that not only is he a dick, but he's actually an expert, you know, an expert fighter. He's the only one who could uh, defeat Robert Baratheon, mm-hmm. and that's got to count for something. So now that we know this about him, it's just like, okay, well, what the fuck is he going to do? What, what's the movies, what move does he make? And, you know, he wants to honor his name, but I don't really, I don't know, man. People want to be on the winning side. And cause again, all Cersei has to offer is, Oh my God. Oh my God. They're outsiders. They're going to, they're going to come and rape everyone. Yep. What other reason is there to support her? You know, she's a, she's a mad queen. How is she that different from Ares? Nope, she's not. She's she not. blew up the sept with people because they disagreed with her. You know, basically. And people are basically, all they see in Cersei is like, all right, everybody knew that you were basically, you know, whoring around. Like, everybody, it was common knowledge. Except everybody except for fucking Jamie knew what you were up to. And you got caught and called out by the faith. And because Wait, they you're thinking you out, you're thinking more books, though, because all they know is that um, she slept with her cousin, mm-hmm. oh, and then the right. room, and the, the right, and the rumors of her sleeping oh, yeah. with Jamie. Okay, I'm thinking about the what are the what are the brothers or the cousins guys? Oh, uh, um, fuck. I can't what is the Elena? The ones that Elena calls the the left and right? <laughs> no, that's not who. Is not that? No, that's um, who are the, Oh my god, what are their names? Okay, whatever. We'll look it up, but. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. You know, you know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah, fuck the two of them. Were they Kingsguard? I don't know. Whatever. Well, some of um, them were put on the Kingsguard. Yeah. So yeah, so we know that basically the faith got. I mean, as far as I like, could see, even if you just go off of um, the show, it's like they made me do a walk of shame, and I want revenge. So I killed them all. <laughs> I killed them all because I wanted to be queen, and that's what it looks like. It just looks like she wanted to be queen, and uh, um, and she wanted revenge for you know parading her nakedness in front of the entire kingdom. Yeah, there's and again, she's crazy as shit. There is no reason to support her. She has very she doesn't have much of an army. Um. She doesn't strike loyalty. I mean, there's fear. Yeah, totally. totally. We yeah, we know that. Um, we know that she's to be afraid of. But at the same time, it wasn't her who planned like the murder, the red wedding, and all those things. It was Tywin. And Tywin is gone. And Tywin had help from the Boltons and from the Freys, and the Boltons and the Freys are gone. Mm-hmm. So again, Man. and the sudden Maester, I just saw a sign that the Maesters at the Citadel are not getting this information fast enough to <laughs> record it. Yeah, the Maesters at the Citadel. Everybody, I think that I think the common the common thread of what we've seen this far this season is that nobody knows what anybody else is doing everybody's kind of like fighting in the dark and the only one we know who's good at that is Arya so we'll see what happens the kettle blacks the kettle blacks she was yes. sleeping with the kettle black brothers yes, but they're not was. in the show but that's they're what not. you were thinking of when you that's what yeah that's, her that's what I was thinking that's what I was thinking of when she had to confess to fornication and all that kind of stuff yes the kettle blacks shout out to the books <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I mean, I guess one thing, if Cersei, if they can kill a dragon, they can definitely get some people to their side. Yep. But right they now, I mean, It could be, I mean, I think you're right, it could be something as simple as Drogon's flying over King's Landing and 
They're like, oh shit, there's a fucking dragon. And I think we are going to see that. I feel like that was something in Bran's vision, maybe. Drogon mm. flying over King's Landing. I think that was in one of his visions. Oh, interesting. All right, so I'm ready to fucking see Bran again. <laughs> Bran. If, yeah, I mean, the, 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 I, I don't even want to call him the Hound anymore because he's so different. So standard of Clegane is seeing in the flames, and we've got Bran. Like, come on, Bran. It's time for you to make an appearance. And, I mean... I feel kind of fucked asking for that because usually when he does, things just go totally wrong. But it's about time for things to go. We like we need to, we need to see something of what's coming. And we do have we to do have, we do have to come back to uh, whether or not whether or Bran not. broke the wall of magic. So that's something yeah, else we're still waiting. Yeah, you're to right. See. Exactly. Um, and I think the more the longer I think about it, the more I'm inclined to agree with you that yes, the magic is broken. But then it's like, yeah. is it that simple? Is it? So, okay, the Shivering Sea thing about it being frozen yeah, and, and, and the, the White Walk is just walking over it. I don't think it's that simple because if that were the case, why wouldn't they just do that earlier? They bring yep. Winter with them, so why not just walk around? Exactly. What would be the point in even wanting to break the magic of the wall? Because then the wall is yep. just useless. What's the point of the yeah, wall? Yeah, they could just skirt the wall. <laughs> right, because, I mean, if winter time is that cold and the sea freezes... Why wouldn't they have just done that any other winter? I don't know. Yeah. I don't really like that idea. I think it's just cold up there. Yeah, I don't like it either. I was like, ah, uh, it's just, just, it's kind of reaching, my man. Like, right, like they just, know, they like, just walk around the wall, like just like on, that. They, that's it. Yeah, because so why haven't they done that before? If like the only way I would have been like, okay, that works if it actually turned out that Arya met the others instead of Nymerian. I'd be like, oh. <gasps> But other than that, nah, man. Sorry, guys. I think that theory is false. I do think that we're going to find out a little bit more about the wall magic now. Um, maybe, I guess, coming in this episode. But, you know, if Jamie's learning his lessons or, you know, mistakes or whatever the fuck, who knows? Daenerys, I mean, yeah. We got We need to be back up to the wall and Bran. And, um... Oh, shit. The Queen's, just the Queen's Justice... Read the description again. Because well, um, that, that could be Melisandre too, dude. If John and Davos show up at Dragonstone. That's true. Daenerys holds court. Cersei returns a gift. Jaime learns from his mistakes. Yeah. That could be. I mean, we, I mean Melisandre, if, we say, if we're right and she stays at Dragonstone and she's there for this meeting with Davos and John, which I think will happen this next episode, then... You but know. Danny right now is in the business of forgiving people, though. Yeah. But she killed a princess. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. She's forgiving people for taking the wrong side, but she killed a princess. A child. And you know how she feels about that. Yeah, it's true. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see. Well, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we close out? Um, no. Shout out to our Twitter people who are following and telling other people to listen to us because that's awesome. Yeah, and, that's uh, great. Shout out to, was it Podcasts in Color? Podcastsincolor.com. It's a directory of podcasts made by people of color in all different types of subjects. And we were yeah. on the front page for people who cover Game of Thrones, so that was pretty exciting to see that. Yeah, thanks, guys. I think the person who runs it is named Barry, so shout out to you, Barry. Thank you. Shout out, Barry, of Podcasts in Color doing good things we like it and i think it's really cool that somebody listened to us <laughs> uh, uh, well you can reach us on twitter thousand eyes one o-n-e we're on facebook a thousand eyes and one we stop by on, like our page yes we are on instagram a thousand eyes and one and uh, we have not updated our blog, but it's thousandeyespodcast.wordpress.com. You can also email us thousandeyespodcast at gmail.com. Give yeah, us some who feedback. Do gonna, who do you think is going to make it allow, out of the live? Uh, I can't talk. Out of the season <laughs> alive. Who do you think is going to die? Do you have any theories? Oh, yeah. Send uh, us your Deadpools, too. Yeah. Let's find out who we all think is going to die. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. This is Nikki. And this is Tanya. Bye. Bye.
Bye. <laughs> Beep ba ba Like a stone cold killer And I don't know the meaning of surrender You'll never take me alive You'll never take me alive Riding through town like a stone cold killer And I don't know the meaning of surrender You'll never take me alive You can't catch me, run Today. Yep um, Yep, we are done We just finished? We just finished God damn There's a lot to go over <laughs> Congrats on your on your fame. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll All talk right. to you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye.